Yo, good evening everybody. What is going on? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's go to the loading screen. There we go. Oh, Cammy! Good evening, R. Dominic. Yeah. Is that supposed to be the noise that they make uh, during that first little intro bit where that... That's obviously the wise and storyteller voice. Yes. Yes, it is. I understand. Hi everybody, happy Wednesday. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing good, quite good, actually. Particularly good. Um, <coughs> so my annoying little cough here. Uh, fading, but hanging on as much as it can. Um, yeah, had a pretty good day. My kids, my kids start school tomorrow. That's, that's kind of the big news for me. Um, I've been looking forward to this. They've been looking forward to this. Naturally, we're a little nervous about the whole thing. We don't want them or anybody getting sick. Uh, on a Thursday. It's still it's still Wednesday here on the West Coast. So. Also, hi, Hoink. Good to see you. But yeah, their first day of school is a Thursday. Um, they may have done that so that the younger kids could have a couple like shorter days. Like my my kindergartner... Her first two days are only going to be like three hours long. It's just going to be from 8.50 to 11.50 in the morning. So. <clears throat> on Friday, I go on bread and water for a while. Yeah, I am uh, I'm excited to get, get back to being able to actually focus on work. My kids are excited to actually be getting back to school. They both, they both really like school. They like being around other kids and doing stuff, so. Um... And it seemed like our district, so our, our district actually opened back up um, last school year before vaccines were going out. And they seemed to manage things okay. There were no major outbreaks. They didn't have to close the schools back down or anything. Um, <clears throat> there were very, f very few cases in the, in the local so school system. And, uh, and they got those folks out as soon as they found them. So I have confidence that they can handle this. Uh, now that most of the population here is is vaccinated, I mean it's the, it's the South Bay of Los Angeles, so um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, see how they like it, see how they feel about it. Another step towards whatever may may be normal now. Sounds promising. That's what I'm thinking, Silver Mike. What I'm hoping for. Um, Aside from that, Gamescom was today. I'm sure we'll have some some comments about the the games and trailers and stuff that were uh, revealed today. There was there was a bunch of stuff that I was really excited about. Stuff that I've been waiting well years on at this point, uh, and it's it's finally 
There's finally a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, also, I started playing that new Marvel mobile game, uh, Future Revolution, I think it's called. It's great. It plays itself. I don't have to do shit. I just, I just half on claim rewards after it gets done doing something. It's great. It's very, it's a very pretty game. Um, it's not as Genshin-y as, as I was thinking it might be. It's a lot more MMO-y. You, you kind of... <clears throat> it, it's a bit clunky in the way you run around or fly around, and then you, you blow up a whole bunch of stuff with your superpowers, and you get a whole bunch of junk that you shove into menus that make your strength number go up. So it's, it's very, it's very MMO-y. It's very, like, m mobile game free-to-pay, but I don't have to do anything. So, I like it. <laughs> I want a game... What I really want... Whenever I play these games, I realize I want games that are, that are designed around the planning and not the execution. I feel like there's this huge potential because we have so many mobile games that aren't actually designed to be played. Like, <clears throat> why not just play Cookie Cooker then? Because there's, like... <clears throat> Okay, there was there was a clicker game that was all about planning, um, and it was and now I can't remember. It was, King, K, Clicker Kingdom or, K, I I can't remember what it was called, um, but you basically had a little kingdom and there was like a huge amount of strategy. There was like a whole tech tree in it and different different allegiances you could have every time you restarted. There's a huge amount of strategy to actually progressing in that game. <clears throat> I just want the red disc game from the next generation. No, no, I want something with a level of complexity. I like, I like games where I can just kind of set things up and they go and they do things and I check in on them later and, and stuff has happened and I've gotten more stuff to work with. And it, it made me realize, I feel like there's this huge, there's this huge gap in mobile gaming in particular for games where you actually like strategize and like you, you set up, you set up a plan, or you set a bunch of parameters, or something, and then you you let your you let your people or your robots or your ships or whatever go do a thing without you. Like, <coughs> obviously, this Marvel game is actually designed to be played. It has buttons on the screen. You can move around and punch and use your powers and all that. But it has such a robust autoplay feature. You don't actually have to play it. You just have to tap when when you're done with a quest on which quest you want to do next. <clears throat> I'm talking about there should be games that are specifically designed like not to be played like actively like that, but rather where where the the gameplay is in you understanding and managing and strategizing like the automation option. And then once everything is the way you want it, you push go, you leave your phone alone for 5, 10, 15 minutes, and then you see what happened. You don't actually have the opportunity to, to have any, any further input. It's all in the planning. I played AFK Arena for a while, and that was all about planning after you hit a wall. <coughs> yeah, I haven't... I, admittedly, I haven't played a ton of these, like, gotcha games or clicker games or AFK games, but I... I feel like there, there's potential, especially, especially from a management perspective. Like, it, there, there has to be something where you could be like, like the commander of a spaceship, and like you give, like you give your bridge crew directives, like how to respond to different situations, and then you go fuck off to your ready room for a couple hours or something. Or um, you're, you're, you're managing like, like an army, and obviously you can't micromanage every soldier like an RTS. So you give you give each each platoon like broad instructions, like what to do in case these things happen, and then like send them on missions and stuff. So I feel like I feel like there's a lot of potential for games like that, and I feel like they don't really exist. Cause yeah, I'm I'm very particular about how I play phone games. Specifically, I don't want to play phone games. I want I want to set up my phone games to do a thing, and then I want I want them to do the thing by themselves, 
That, yes, perfect timing, Lojo High. I've just been talking about dumb phone games that I don't want, that I want to play by not actually playing. <coughs> like, I really, I really genuinely do like that, the whole, like, passive gameplay thing. I really, I really enjoy that. All right, so last time on Okami, uh, we made it to this village. It was cursed. They sucked all of my ink out. It wasn't as hot as it sounds. Um, we beat up the princess. Uh, we punched a demon right out of her face. And that lifted the curse. And now we need to find a bunch of hiding doggos. Well, there's one. Obviously. I need to make this really nice. <clears throat> nice slip in a quick reminder that nominations for September games close tonight. Yes, yes. Uh, if if you haven't been checking the games for September channel on our Discord, um, Lojo High has been organizing nominations for next month's Community Night game. There are several good options in there already that have been voted on. Uh, if you still want to submit a game, you certainly can. If you haven't voted yet, uh, it's quite close between several of the options, so you certainly want to get in there and do that. So, Also, uh, this Friday, we're doing another uh, wheel night. We're picking, we're looking for games in the week-long deals that are genuinely in, in, interesting and or uh, entertaining in their own special ways. Uh, if you haven't made a sub submission yet and you have something in mind, there's a dragon coin option for that. Hmm. You live! Congratulations, Manic. And uh, congratulations on your victory with the uh, with your um, uh, convention. I was I was happy to hear that that worked out. In in part, at least. What's the dog doing here? Hmm? I think he's trying to say something. Let me listen carefully. I can understand some animals. I mean, we're also a dog, so we should understand the dog. <clears throat> it's wagging his tail. That's that canine tracker you got there. Hmm? What's that? He needs some food. I'm hungry. This man is begging for food with terrible manners. All right, fine. I could bite you, you know. I wonder if I need to bring you something from somewhere. All right, let's go look for another doggo. And or something to feed this dude. <clears throat> All right, well, I just hoovered that stuff up. And your money. Oh, you poor people, literally. Head tell several staffers to go fuck themselves. The war goes on, huh? They're out, they're out, the flowers are out. I give them water every day, you know. Give them more tomorrow, too. You're welcome. I was chatting so much during the day, I've lost my voice. I need to give it a rest now. There you go. Ooh. All right, well, now that I've stolen these people's life savings and ink, let's go somewhere else. Here he goes. Nobody wants herbs. They want seeds, that's right. Cold World Steel! Good evening, friend. Good to see you. <coughs> They'll have more when you visit next time. Good point. Good point. Hi, Gnosis Doc. How you doing tonight? Well, I hope. That's not well, I hope. It's well. I hope you are in the condition of well being. Nice. Good. Just, just fine. Great. Okay. Got that sorted. Too wild, Manic. I'd say, I'd say that's a pretty clear man mandate. <laughs> Obviously, bots. Talking so much today, my throat's as dry as bone. Talk up storm tomorrow too. No one gossips better than me. Well, you can have that. Come across a slightly ramshackle house in the Taka Pass. The old couple there were the last ones to order bamboo ware. Apparently, they suddenly had to have a birdcage made for them. 
I've always hated animals, so I wonder why they want a pet now. But yes, there's a bunch of stuff going on right now. There's the creepy old Cutter family, which I guess stole the Sparrow Lady that we have to free if we want to get into Sparrow Town. Um, <clears throat> there's everything that's going on up here where we need to get the shrine back in order. Do we murder a Joro Gumo? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, um, our, our friend Manic helped manage a convention and uh, there's been all sorts of drama with that that uh, he's been giving us the play-by-play -play of during the day. So. The Spider Queen, oh yes, we did do the Spider Queen, yes. That was the thing we accomplished last time. <clears throat> Guy making all the noise from Kamiki, apparently. I remember hearing that some descendants of Nagi live there. Hard to believe old tales like his nowadays. Legends is legend. Imagine there being no monsters in the world. Okay, so the, the doggo detector doesn't follow us inside, so apparently dogs don't live here. Didn't somebody freak out earlier when I when I whacked into that. That's probably during the day. Maybe they're asleep now. Incredibly heavy sleeper. Or dead. Could be either, really. Um, let's go around this These are very pretty little lanterns. Oh, oh, wait, 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 there's some stuff over here that I completely missed. Literally been dicking around town all night. Okay, there we go, there we go. Here we is. All right. Hello, guys. There's some that. They like meat. You may also be using a cane at the convention. It depends on how fast you're. Oh, what happened to your toe? I'm guessing it was worse than stubbing it, huh? <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. Oh, I am so sorry to hear that, dude. I would not wish that on anybody. That's worse than stepping on a Lego. Hey, doggo! Conveniently placed doggo. What's a dog doing here? Wagon's tail, what's that? Give me some food, I'm hungry. Oh, God. Why do these flea bags think we're gonna feed them? Why indeed? All right, I'll feed you, but I need funds. I'm gonna smash all your pottery first. Especially when I need to be mobile and active. The workout regimen is on hold. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't I haven't really been doing anything since coming down with my little cold. Hopefully I can get back to to jogging soon. Once it sorry. Oh birds! I think 300 should be enough to upgrade something. Uh, it's enough to upgrade a lot of something. I am going to upgrade this astral pouch. Why not? Some dumb phonics worked for me. Uh, hello there, guy. Oh, this is Mr. Bamboo. That's right, that's right. So that that's another reason we need to get into the into the Sparrow Village, is so this guy can get access to his bamboo again. Can I just cut that? Well that's a yes. What the fuck? 
Mm, what's a, yeah, what's a dog doing here? Wagging his tail. Oh my god. Are we making progress? I can't really tell. Well, we're finding the dogs we need to find. There are five... I believe it's five guardian dogs for this village. And the princess asked us to find them all. And we found three, but they're all hungry. I guess the other two are up further. Yes. We're actually on a lot of quests right now, and they all... They're all kind of interlinked. There's a lot of things we need to do, but they're all connected in... in different ways, and I'm not 100% sure what order things are gonna come in. God. I do have meat. Um, I didn't think to use the meat because there isn't that feed prompt that you usually get, like when you feed other kinds of animals. Hi. Like, my options are to listen or bite them. If I go into my menu... Okay, you just use it from the menu. Alright. Well. There we go. Thank you, Gnosis Doc. For your roundabout assistance. <laughs> Alright, we've all we've all watched Border Collies eat before. We all grew up with Lassie. The, yes, the rumors about Marvel XCOM were true. Uh, we haven't we haven't seen gameplay yet, but um, the trailer for it during Gamescom was Pretty sweet. And I am I am all about atypical treatment of Marvel properties, so Marvel Tactical RPG plus Satans is good look in my book. My master, Princess Fuse, has summoned me. However, I didn't want to go straight home. I was one of those Satomi Canine Warriors. Cole. Definitely looks the part. Now that my stomach is full, I will return to my master. I do hear that. I hear really well. It'd be fun to watch Marvel characters miss each other all the time. Like Princess Fuse talked about them, I thought they were human. You think these flea bags are gonna be any help? Yeah, there was a bunch of good stuff that came out of Gamescom. I was actually... One of, one of the games that left the biggest impression on me was that uh, that indie game, um, Cult of the Lamb, which looks kind of like an extra cute take on Binding of Isaac, but, like, not gross and wreathed in shit. Which is honestly a huge appeal for me because I really enjoyed the Binding of Isaac despite its aesthetic. Look at those big old carp streamers. They must look uh, awesome in a strong wind. Without any wind, they're a uh, rather sorry sight. Yeah, don't worry, we'll fix that. All right, well, let's go down here and let's rediscover those doggos. Cult of the Lamb, yes. Really going all out on advertising what if by making what if XCOM was Marvel, yeah. Um, okay. I have a functioning memory. I can remember where the other three doggos were. Meats. Binding of Isaac clone that doesn't... No, it's not a clone. It is not a clone. Um, the, the Binding of Isaac comparison is... May only be in, like... It, that's kind of how the gameplay looked to me. It did seem more focused on melee combat, so top-down action-y thing. But there's also there also seems to be a major um, like building component. Like you seem to manage the camp of your cult and like build buildings for them and manage their affairs. Yeah. 
Excellent art style, too. That's that's what really caught my attention. Act Razor up in this. World needs more games like the original Act Razor. That's for sure. Canine Warrior Sheen. Now my stomach is full, I will return to my master. I do. I hear that very well. Thank you. Um, okay. One was in the tree. And we go through the cave for that one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's a smarter way to do this. Did I miss a lot of audio cues and I didn't notice or something? Audio cues for what? Is Will the Gritty Act Razor Mobile Gacha game into existence with your lack of specificity? Oh god. Uh, yeah, shout shout out to all the, the Tales games fans around the world. Who had their heart broke hearts broken today by the announcement of a new Tales game that's mobile only. He seems keeps acting like we're dead. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Arise is coming anyway, that's true. Although the really, the really heartbreaking part is going to be when the mobile game uh, ends up making like 10 times as much profit as Arise does. <laughs> because that is the curse of mobile games. They can be as awful as they want and just make stupid, stupid piles of money. You can only imagine Osh's disappointment the next Game Fighters game isn't a mobile only one. <laughs> No, that was that was my big excitement for the for the day was like the big real true trailer for KOF 15. I was I was super excited about that. That game looks so good. And they're really putting a ton of effort into it. How do I like a Twitter post anonymously? Oh boy. <coughs> All right, you. Yeah. Meats. Somebody was whining about it. it's not cool. We made our policy change and then wasted their money and so on and so forth. Well, I'm sure you're gonna get folks like that, especially on Twitter. And then warrior Chi. Chi's the cutest so far. Get the vaccine, you walking biohazard. <laughs> the only fair response, really. Hey, Amy, how many of the canine warriors does this make? Maybe we should go talk to Princess Fuse now. Interesting, so we found four. Does that mean that we're going to be the fifth one? Or maybe we have to do something special to find the fifth one. Whee! Yeah, I am so excited for the new King of Fighters. I, I have to wait another six months for it. They, they did announce the release date and it's February of next year, but I'll be strong. I've waited this long, I can wait a little bit longer. I guess the last one's... You're the last one, huh? Wow. She's been around the block. Why does have the same style of interaction on Facebook at local con? Now the requirements for public meetups have been tightened again, BC. I'm gonna be walking uh, if they're on their computer whining. <laughs> hey, Amy. That flea bag's giving me the evil eye. I didn't even notice that canine tracker you got there. What's that? My master, Princess Fuse, has summoned me. But first, I wish to try out the skills I've honed in my journey. Princess Fuse forbids me to join in fruitless battles. But I want you to prove your right to bear the canine tracker. Yeah, a lot of nerve picking a fight with us. Bring it on, you flea bag, right for a ball? What if I say no? Do I have to? Can I just go talk to Fuse? So 
That one's about to get their butt sniffed. My hero, the wolf! Thanks you for the canine warriors who found their way home. Thank the gods they're safe and unharmed. I'm afraid I don't have much to offer, but please accept this. You got food! I only hope the other canine warriors are safe. I still sense one more in the village. He's literally right outside. And because of your indifference, I'm going to have to beat his ass to make him come home. So be it. There was only one right answer. I don't know this fully bag thinks he is, but he's in for a surprise. Or are we? Could he be tougher than he looks? Because he sure don't look like much. Okay, he's definitely faster than expected. He's got a ton of health, too. Whoa! Whoa! Guy just hit us in rage. Get wrecked. Seems to have a limited set of tricks. Well, I guess you can't teach him any new ones. But has bad depth perception, you can exploit that. Who say gave us this thing if they don't think that's legit taking up with her seriously? A worthy opponent, I see. Let us fight where we have more room. You hear that, Amy? Hey, hey, listen! Sounds like fun. This time we'll be playing for keeps. Bring on Fleabag. Wait, if he's been summoned by the princess, then this is another one of the Satomi canine warriors. I mean, him being dressed exactly the same way as the other four didn't tip you off. I'm done toying with you. Now you shall feel the wrath of the Satomi power orb. Did he just threaten to teabag us? Bring it on, dog breath. We ain't afraid. Oh, Tay. Thought I heard something out here. I was happy dog now. Nyan Perona Panda, hello! Best game ever? I take it you're a fan? You two aren't fighting, are you? you fighting? Yeah, of course not. Just some friendly wrestling. Friendly platonic wrestling. Look, not a scratch on either of us. Well, can't speak for him. The way Navi characters work, they're supposed to know more of the protagonist, not less. Good boy. At least now we have five of the Satomi power orbs. But you've been naughty doggies! Why did you not come home immediately when I summoned you? Princess, what's with those Satomi power orbs? Each Satomi canine warrior bears an orb of a different virtue. Power orbs are the Satomi house's greatest treasure. I need the orb's power to break Crimson Helm's barrier. That's right, there's a demon called Crimson Helm that's fucking everything up on the mountain here. Got my dream tattoo from Amaterasu like two weeks- Oh, congratulations! Boy, I bet that looks really good, too. The art style in this game is fantastic. Yeah, I bet that looks really, really cool. Canine warriors never listen when I summon them back. Three of them have yet to be accounted for. I fear something may have happened to them. There's no one I could send out to help them. This is what I look, lady. Okay, okay, I get the hint. We'll find the rest of them, too. After all, I said we'd give them all back without a scratch. Yay! Wonderful, I'll be forever grateful. I know the general locations of the remaining three canine warriors. So mark them on your map. Oh, that's not too bad. We can handle that. All right. Isn't anybody ever getting an Eastern tattoo? I mean, it would it would just be like a dot, a little black and green dot. Tardiness is unacceptable. Weren't you in a cave? Nippon's covered in evil. There are strange markings. Is that some kind of new style? I'm a god. You a wolf? Where were you born? Where were you born, Annie? Amongst the stars. 
Tattoo artist done an amazing job in two weeks just coloring. That's awesome. That sounds really, really cool. Well, I'm excited for you. I bet it's gonna turn out fantastic. I have one of those, not sure if it's a tattoo though. <laughs> All right, so, let's go, Wah! Might as well save, since we're here. I want that giant ass sword that Ami has in the background of the save screen. Like, I wanna go full Sif. I'm sure Amaterasu has some kind of origin sh story, but I have no idea what it is. I am, I'm not, I've forgotten a lot more of Japanese folklore than I remember. I studied it in college. It wasn't it wasn't my major, my minor or anything, but I I took several classes relating to it. I took a Japanese architecture class my last year in college. That was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Um All right. We need to head across that way. Okay, cool. Oh, it's this damn. No. Beware of Banjo Monkey. Alright. I will resist the urge to start fishing again down here. And we'll just pick our way over. Tattoo goes from the elbow to shoulder. Wow, nice. This is the place that Mr. Bamboo mentioned. He said he couldn't get any bamboo to make his bamboo wear. So this was marked on my map. Is this marking a different quest or what? Because I'm definitely not getting in here until I save that sparrow girl. Did we make clear before? Precious daughter's been kidnapped. Okay. Hmm. Oh. The hotel part? Hotel on 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 onsen? <clears throat> All right, so wrong area. That me okay. So one of them is in Sasa Sanctuary, which means this is the part where we need to we need to figure out what's going on with the cutters. Well, it's nighttime, we blew the roof open. I know what I'm supposed to do, just not specifically how to do it. Maybe I can do something a little different again? Need to play this game again ASAP? This is the Steam version, and it seems really good. Oh, hello. Hey Jim, back here again, Mutt, you got some nerve. You wouldn't even make a, a snack, you My husband's caught a nice tasty beast for us to feast on anyway. We finally stop tweeting, we can dig in. Why not just take their phone away if they won't stop tweeting? Moon's very bright again tonight, isn't it? Moonlight can be a real nuisance for us, you know. It seems to give us strange powers and make us show our true colors. It makes it hard to keep up a pretense of normal life. We get so hungry on nights like that, too. 
Joker. I'm so hungry. We should drag any suspicious characters we see in this light. Oh, wait! This is why you can bite people. Where did the shadow come from? Hey, human, whatever it is. So you saw me. Now I'm going to kill you. I'm going to eat you all up. Bring it on, you spooks. Come out and fight. Oh my god! They're like demon cranes with like a dozen eyeballs. Time to play the crane game. Ow. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Homing fans, that's cheating. Can I bring you down? There we go. Get your ass down here. Really? Okay. You're open! Demon peacocks. Yeah, I guess their I guess their their wingspan wouldn't be big enough for for cranes then. Chirp. Oh, it's so awful being locked away by those monsters. It feels wonderful to be free again. Thanks so much, doggy. Here, let me pet you. You can be petted in Okami. My name is Chun, Pre precious flower of the Sparrow Inn. So you are. Flower of Sasa Sanctuary, Chun. Demon peacocks, otherwise there's... <laughs> no, 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 you got it, you got it. You should repeat that, you should own that one. They weren't possessed humans, they were just straight up demons. Worst disguise ever. Did you see that dude before he transformed? He had like garden sheer mustache. Like it was like it was like beetle clippers. Like no one no one is gonna mistake that dude for human. Is the girl the boss of the sparrow was looking for? Here get home, otherwise Pop will be worried about me. If I go alone, those monsters might catch me again. You come with me back to Sasa Sanctuary, doggy? Rats a handful. Tang with her for a bit. This is exactly what we want to do, Easton. Stupid! I know, right? Come on, doggy, let's go. Eason better watch out. She'll fucking eat him. He's like a snack for her. No! Do not want. Where's your... Okay, it's this way. Eason is just the worst. How about no? Laters! I don't know, maybe maybe Eason gets his own little character arc and grows as a bug. Possibly. Maybe. Probably not. The official art book, there's some stylish things. I love the art in this game. Absolutely love it. It's like it's like a Japanese scroll you can play through. It's really cool. Hey, hey! Hey, you Scruffy! What are you doing at Sasa Sanctuary? Well, Sparrow Tribe is on high alert at the moment. No one gets through this gate until the boss's daughter is found. Chun? Chun, are you okay? Boss, boss, she's back! Chun's back! Orb. Pop! Pop! <laughs> 
So this is what hop on pop is like in Japanese. Is there a pop I won't go on my own again? The decox broke me. <laughs> uh oh. Boss is delighted. You sure about that? Come on, dog, you save me, pop. You give him something to thank him, won't you? Chirp, chirp. Boss has accepted you. You're lucky. Okay, then you better come inside. Bye, Borb. Burb of prodigious size. This is such a chun thing to do. The decox broke me. It's a very unfortunate phrasing. <laughs> Because burbs don't know any better. Ah, there's a peach in that. I got some seeds. <clears throat> this is such a weird looking rock. Because it's full of ink! I knew it! Rock couldn't fool me. This one of the sparrows be named Jack, don't know why. No, I want to feed him. Rorf. Rorf. Come back. I need your appreciation. I need your validation. Validate me, sparrows. Might have been before that? When did... I'm... Because this game was what? 2006? 2007? I... Or was it before that? Was that, was that the date of one of the re-releases? When did this game come out? Because I think I have a rough idea... 2006. Okay. The first Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm pretty sure, came out while I was in college, which would be 2005 at the latest. Welcome to Sparrow Inn. I'm a hostess here. Let us know if there's anything you need. So I think possibly Pirates of the Caribbean predates this, though it may have released while this one was being, like, Completed. 2003, okay. Another month of the red. It's bad enough not having any gas, but closing the place. Wow. Pirates of the Caribbean is almost, that franchise is almost 20 years old. Wow. Wow, what a terrible thing to think about. Boss is horrible with numbers, but he's got a big heart. So everyone goes along with him. I'm pretty sure the boss has a big everything. Rats! Let's feed the rats! Too much coffee, Sparrow. How happy must this rat be to just have a giant pillowy pile of food to perch upon and gnaw away at in its adorable little rat way? Halo's 20 years old, so excuse me while I go fade into dust. <laughs> Pretty, yeah, I think you're right, Manic. That's gotta be rat heaven. Yep. Yeah, it was like everything we reflect fondly on now is like it was like 20 years ago. Um, I didn't talk to you. Welcome! This is South Sanctuary's long-running Sparrow Inn. Yes, welcome! You're the one who rescued young Chun, aren't you? It's chaos here for a while when she suddenly vanished like that. Thank goodness she's safe now. Oh, yes, thank goodness. Fourth. Um. Yeah, okay, I think I want to go out the side. Nyan Perona Panda, thank you for the follow. And welcome back. We missed you terribly. Not staying here, are you? No, of course not. Imagine that innocent look is what you've gotten in. Oh, is what got you into Sasa Sanctuary. 
Oh, it's an elevator, sweet. No, you're fine, you're fine. I very much appreciate the follow. Can I just steal your shit? Is he gonna be mad at me that I did that? I remember when portable phones were not a thing. I remember. Oh God. I remember going to the movies when I was in college. Ironically, we may have been going to see Pirates of the Caribbean. And the guy in line in front of me, I think I, he either had the first iPhone or like one of, one of those super primitive touchscreen phones that predated the iPhone. And I remember being like, wow, the future is here. I remember being utterly fascinated by it. I think it was an iPhone because it was really rounded. And like the early, the early iPhones were like very, very round, weren't they? Like round edges, rounded back. And then they, they gradually got flatter and flatter. Could have just been a time traveler, also possible. <clears throat> I remember being really excited the Twins won the World Series and that was 30 years ago. <laughs> Been waiting for you. Did a great job finding Chun. We want to thank you too. I told Pop about everything you did. He was really surprised. Where's Pop? Uh oh. Boss is very impressed with you. I'm gonna give you everything in these baskets as a reward. You can rest at the end down below. The hot spring behind the end is great for relaxing. Perfect. Love it. Turned 31 last Monday and I live in Brazil. First mobile is a Motorola or something. Oh God, my, my first phone, my first cell phone was when I was in college. It was a Nokia, it was tiny. It was like this big. It was like slightly bigger than a lighter practically. And, and I loved it because it actually had a color LCD screen. Could have been worse, you could have been idolizing a glass hole. Boy, that, that came and went pretty quickly, didn't it? Miss your Blackberry? I do remember seeing a lot of people in college with Blackberries. Like that character in every time travel movie or TV show where the guy from the future has some crazy technology and buys and is like, wow, that new iPhone's amazing. Fingers too fat and stupid to operate a touchscreen. I, so one thing I haven't really liked about the, the progression of phones is they keep getting bigger. Like the first smartphone I had was an iPhone 4S. It was perfect. It was the absolute perfect size for my hand. I could grip it. My thumb could reach everything on the screen. I loved it. It was great. And then we went, we went from the 4S to the 6, and that was bigger. And I was like, oh, this is kind of awkward. And then I think we went, I think we, I think we held out on the sixes all the way to the XR, and that was even bigger. And at that point, I was like, "Oh fuck it, <laughs> this is this this is my life now." Motorola something was the shape of a pad. That ca <laughs> now that paints an interesting picture. That's hilarious. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, phone designs certainly came a long way. I do remember, I do remember the big boxy, like, uh, like late 80s, early 90s cell phones. The, the, it was like a, a big, a big rectangle, like a block of wood with like a, a antenna out of it. That phone turned out as a meme later. Oh God, I bet. Couldn't miss an opportunity like that. Zach Morris phone. <coughs> and then my parents had, my parents got a cell phone for emergencies in the late nineties. And it was one of those gray, I think it was a Nokia. It was one of those gray Nokias 
that was like maybe like like this big and it had it still had the little antenna but they'd they'd gone down to just nubs at that point it had an antenna like that long on it and the nice squishy buttons if you if you can find the model man oh dude link it link in chat <clears throat> motorola 120c oh the bamboo craftsman already came back that's nice I'm super curious what this thing looks like. There have been a lot of wild cell phone designs. I tell you what was fun. I tell you what was really fun. Was living in Japan before iPhones got really popular there. Cause Japan was, and I, I think to some, Narl, you can, you can back me up on this. I think it still is to an extent, is the land of the flip phone. Oh my God. like. There was there was every kind of flip phone imaginable in Japan before before the the iPhone like really took over. Um, we have we have one somewhere. My wife's old one from like 15 years ago. Um, but it's like it's a thick white flip phone and it flips open and it's got like a flat screen on it. But then like you turn the screen around and flip it back down and it turns into a camera. And the screen becomes like the digital camera screen, and there's a big, like an actual like camera lens on the other side. <clears throat> Elderly mother chose the phone marketed with all the hip hop ads because she liked blue and all of her ringtones were like Snoop, Snoop songs. That, that's rules. That's great. <clears throat> Here in Brazil, we have some pads that are the same shape and sizes because the thing turned out like such a meme. That's great. Is this a? You know, I think it might be a Sony one. Yeah, I think I think you might be right there. I had a salsa cake. This is cake bursting with beans. Feels astral powerful. Nice. Salsa egg rolls. Boy, I hope this guy wasn't about to tuck into all of this. Nyan, don't worry about it. You're I completely understand what you're saying. You're doing great. Doesn't look like any of my pads. I've been playing hockey for 20 years. <laughs> I'm sure I ended up in a funny place this time. And the gods are telling me to rest. I'm working hard, but a trader never rests. That's the salesman's curse. You've been sent to buy something, pup. Take a look. Can't stop the hustle, I guess. May not be able to hang in there for the entire stream. I'm absolutely exhausted. I absolutely understand. Do not worry about it. I'm pretty tired myself, and I'm going to have to get up pretty early tomorrow for my kids' first day of school. Make sure they get ready. I was really hoping I was like fucking up this game of Go by doing this. The board game here, but it doesn't look like it's been used. <clears throat> yeah, uh, first day of school for my kids is tomorrow. So, um, I think we're all a little bit nervous about it, but but um, our school district actually has done a really good job of managing things during the pan during the pandemic. They actually, um, so I picked. I picked distance learning for my kids last year, last school year, uh, before before the vaccines. Um, but a majority of people in our school district chose to go back and do in-person education. And the kids did actually go back in like November of December of last year. But to their credit, there were no there were no major outbreaks in the school system. They actually did manage to manage it really well. Um, which gives me a lot of confidence in their ability to handle it this year, now that everyone is vaccinated. Because, I mean, this is this is the South Bay of Los Angeles. Fucking everybody's vaccinated here. So, so yeah, I'm not I'm not too worried. I mean, yeah, like, there, there's always a chance, but but I, I, I feel confident enough to send them back, basically. It's you, isn't it? You're the one who rescued Chun. It's me, yes. It's it me. <clears throat> Need more of the rats. Boy, they'd be so pissed at me if they knew I was doing this. Unless they're keeping the rap Unless they're keeping the rats as like pets, maybe or something. Do you have phone memes? How about side talking with the end gauge? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I almost want to pick up an N gauge sometime just to like dink around with it and experience, experience that weirdness for myself. I've always dreamed to play hockey, but in Brazil it's kind of difficult. Oh God, I can imagine. I have to assume hockey is is not real big there. What about what about um? Are you are you okay? <coughs> what about like not ice hockey? What about like street hockey or something? Do does anybody play that in Brazil? Did fight anyone? Was there a big battle? What kind of monsters do you have to fight? Tell me everything. Decox. That's all you need to know. Where's your rollerblade stop being produced in the late 90s? <laughs> no, there's still, whenever I go down to the beach here in the South Bay, there's somebody, there is some, inevitably somebody on rollerblades. So um, unless they just keep circulating them around thrift shops or something, somebody's still making them. Brazil is starting to vaccinate 18 plus, the golden rosemary, as we call the Karens, don't want to. God, even there? That's ridiculous. That is a good name for them. I, I like that, that's a keeper. <laughs> Live in the countryside, so that's five to six rollerbladers. Wow. <laughs> a beautifully kept shamisen. But I'd love to hear a song or two from this baby. Oh, it just reminded me. I'm I'm so sad. One of my uh, one of my coworkers, uh, she was Brazilian, and she was just an absolute joy to be around. She had all kinds of stories about when she would visit Brazil and all the adventures she had there. But but she quit a couple months ago, so I'm not going to get to see her again. It's so sad. I'm still working from home. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, I have been working from home since March of 2020. So most of my coworkers I haven't I haven't seen in person in well over a year and a half. <clears throat> Someone just went from the west coast, east coast of Canada on rollerblades. Wow. More than 9,000 kilometers. Okay, so question. Question. I I shamefully don't know much about the geography of Canada. Is that like is that like a particularly mountainous route? I mean, they would have had to go over the Rockies, right? Did have a sister in a support van behind? Well, I should hope so, yeah. Brazilians will conquer the world someday if they want to. <coughs> I could believe that. I could definitely believe that. Oh, they got a lot of good food here. Sounds like crab. Assume you took one of the passes through the Rockies. Hotch potch. Marinade and simmered vegetables. Huh. What good is a used up world and how could it be worth having? Now there are wolves serving here? Yep, I'm sure is strange in. The food is just great. You know, dreaming. I mean, an inn run by sparrows? There's a Koto here. I wonder whose it is. Beyond that, you have a lot of flat land until Ontario. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Uh, all right. Go check out this hot spring. Could use a good soak. I love going to onsen in Japan. Oh my god, it's it's one of my favorite things to do when I'm in Japan. It's great. It's also hilarious, because when I, when, I, when I go to hot springs in Japan, I go with, with my wife and, uh, and their family, right? Well, <coughs> my wife's family is my wife, her sister, her mother, and her father, right? And I mean, her sister doesn't always come with us, but so when, when we're with my wife's family, and then I, I have two girls. 
So everyone in everyone uh, when we go to visit my wife's side of the family, it's all women except me and her dad. So when we go to a hot spring, it's just me and me and her dad go off to the men's side. And it's always hilarious to me because there's like there's a process. There's there's like a procedure to getting in a hot spring. You're supposed to like wash yourself off first and then go soak. <coughs> and my wife's father just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he either doesn't give a shit or he just doesn't know. So I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm sitting there doing what I understand to be the proper Japanese way and he's just like, he just jumps right in. It's gonna be a while before he can go to one again. I, yeah. Drives you crazy, I'm sure. Entire, entire family speaks Portuguese and German. I'm the black sheep who has piercings, colorful hair, husky cats, and don't speak German. But you sound like the exciting one, if you don't mind me saying. I thought you were going to say it makes you watch. <laughs> no, it's actually really fun. We went, um, I can't remember the last, it might have been the last time we went to Japan, which is like two or three years ago at this point. We went, we stayed at a hotel with like, a really fancy like rooftop uh, hot spring where they had like they had like pools on like the edge of the building so you could get like a really nice view of like the city and the mountains beyond they had um, they had these like big st they were basically big stone pots that were like one person baths and you just kind of climbed in it and like hunkered down in it and like we were both so excited like we just went around like trying them all it was so much fun <laughs> We're like, oh, this one's so good. Oh, you gotta try this one. Yeah, it's great. I get... It's so funny, because, like, when... When I first... When I first met my wife's parents, like, it was... It, it, it was nice, it was pleasant, it was what, whatever. But they were... They were not excited about her marrying a non-Japanese guy, uh, particularly her father. Like, I remember specifically the night where we went to go tell them that we wanted to get married, and we, we sat down to dinner, and it was the most awkward dinner I've ever had in my entire life, because everyone knew what was going to happen. Everyone knew up front, and like, it's like everyone was dreading that moment. And then we finished eating, and my wife was like, like, Oddish has something to say, and I, I said it, and there was this, like, intermittable silence, like, this silence that last, that seemed to last forever, and then my wife's father talked at us, like, at us, for two straight hours. And I, I barely understand any Japanese, so, <laughs> my wife had to paraphrase after after we left, but she was like, yeah, he's not happy. Um, but we got married. Um, I moved in, I moved in with him for a bit before we moved back to the United States. And the thing is, the thing is, my wife's father is like the kind of older Asian guy. He just talks. He just talks and talks and talks, whether or not anybody's listening. And the, the way my wife's family handles that is they don't fucking listen to it. They, like, my, my wife and her sister and her mother, they just kind of do their own thing while he's sitting there talking. So when I moved in with them, like, my, my Japanese is terrible, but I can pick up the general gist of stuff, right? <clears throat> when I moved in with them, and we'd be sitting there at dinner, and my wife and her mother would be talking about something, and he'd be talking... I would be, like, nodding along with him. And I think he really, really appreciated that. And now we're, like, buddies. Because I'm the one person in the family who really listens to him. Even if I'm not following everything he's saying. So now, like, he's, he, like, he's always got something to talk to me about. And, like, yeah, we, we go and go to hot springs and go on vacation. So it's great. It, it's totally great. So I like to think that that worked out for both of us. <laughs> Family is used to it, but the first time you showed up to your boyfriend, so oh, I bet it was, Nian. I bet it was. 
Did he did he not prepare them properly before you showed up? <laughs> yeah, we ended up being buddies. Yeah, we I moved in I moved in with her family for one month. Because I lived in Japan for three years. Um and my my housing was arranged by the school I was teaching at. So when I quit that job, I had to move out of the house too, because it was, it was part of the deal. Um, and there was like a one month span where I, between me moving out and then us moving to the United States. So I just, I just lived with my wife there, which made it easier to kind of prepare uh, to move her to the United States. So that actually wasn't awkward at all. That was actually really, really nice. And whenever we go back to visit them, we we stay we stay with their parents. It's great. Oddish. Ah, yes. Mm, I understand everything. That's that's exactly what it is, Justin Brett. It's just it's just me nodding along politely. Ah, so so this name. Mmm, so ah. Ha, ha, ha. I I have learned the fine art of just like obliquely agreeing with what an old Japanese person says. I, I, have, I have mastered it. Colorful mohawk piercings, I'm not that delicate and feminine. You sound awesome, Nyan. Like, like there's, there's more, there's more than enough delicate feminine people in the world. Variety is the spice of life, after all. Uh, hey, remember when we were at Sasa Bathhouse? Not the traditional family uh, would see a, uh, as a girlfriend for one of their sons. So yeah, I guess that was a pretty big surprise. <coughs> I'm afraid the water's run out. We're closed at the moment. What do you mean there's no hot water? This is a hot spring, ain't it? Happened the other day. There was sort of earthquake. But I heard a monster roar, and the water just stopped flowing all of a sudden. Earthquake and a monster roar? I wonder if that was uh, if that was the disturbance when everything went black. Ever since then, I've been praying for the water to return. Should you really be praying with lit torches for water? Is that how that works? Not showing any signs of spr springing up again. It was after six and a half years or, oh, that's, yeah, that should be more than enough time to, to get used to just about anything. Never before in the history of Sasa bathhouses has this happened. So sorry you've come all this way, only be disappointed. I blame myself. I must beat myself with my own fried drumsticks. Did he just shove those in his eyes? What the fuck? Cut that out, we hate taking baths anyway. Please stop. Jesus Christ, okay, I think he's okay. Please start again. I prayed and prayed and prayed, but the water still won't flow. This is at the end of Sasa Bathhouse. It's dried up now. What my ancestors think? Stop, please! I already told you, you want to take baths? I had the best parent-in-law is ever. That's great. That's great. I'm really glad that worked out. <coughs> oh, the smell of this bamboo sure brings back memories. Bamboo from Sasa Sanctuary smells like no other. Can't wait to get started making my bamboo wear. I must finish in time for the festival. Hey, it's your old bamboo dude. Is nobody else gonna say anything about how he's doing a water prayer dance with sticks around fire? Yeah, I know, right? Like, I really don't think that's how that works. Hello, Wolfie, little sprite. Thank you for all your help. Ever since you found the Sparrow Boss's missing daughter, entry to Sasa Sanctuary is possible again. I wish I could thank you somehow. Is there something you're having trouble with? Trouble? Nah, I mean, other than the giant eight-headed beast that's consuming everything that we're expected to stop. The sparrow over there seems to have a problem. Oh, what's wrong, little Sparrow? I love... I, I love that he has one of those... Uh, one of those like bamboo, like the poop things, like just propped up on him. They're always all, oh, you have your style, we respect that, but we love you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Please leave me alone. I have to put things right. I won't set a bad example for the others. If I sacrifice my flesh to the gods, they'll revive the spring. He really is just jamming those in his face holes. Like they even they even play the cooking sound. Listen. Listen. 
You can hear the sound of eyeballs roasting. You wish to revive this dried up hot spring? I may be of some assistance in that case. What was that? It's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing this guy's wearing glasses is all. Bamboo tube on my back reacts to underground minerals. I should be able to easily detect where the hot spring water is. You sure about that, Gramps? Yep, my bamboo wear never lies. <laughs> That's a spicy eyeball. <laughs> First foul, getting hungry. Somebody, somebody mentioned. Oh, what's up, Durza? Thank you for the bits. Bit and Dash, have a good night. You too. Thanks for dropping by. Um, somebody mentioned somewhere that their Thanksgiving tradition is Cornish hens, and I keep thinking about how much I want to have a Cornish hen. I have not had a Cornish hen since I was a kid. My mom would make them every once in a while when she could get them on sale. But I have not had one since probably, Jesus Christ, maybe middle school. Which of course is approximately one million years ago. Wikipedia says it's a shishi odoshi. Oh, okay. Corn what? Okay, so Cornish hens. They're like little teeny chickens. It, they're like they're like personal chickens. They're like this big, like the whole the whole hen is like this big, and you, you like you can roast it in the in in the oven, and yeah, it's a it's a lean meal for two or a hearty meal for one, and they're really good, really really good. <laughs> Be a good wolfie and dig me a hole. It'll be fun, like a game. Yeah. Dig the shit out of this place. Thank you, both of you. Very well, I'll explain the hot spring digging game. When the game begins, I'll start walking around. Your job is to rapidly dig so I can get deep into the ground. But be careful, many dangers lurk underground. Why so long they're readily available? Um, because my, my mom kind of lost interest in cooking over time, like, as as I got older, well, as we all got older, she she would cook less and less complicated meals. Um, and yeah, she didn't, we, we didn't really do, like, roasts or, or much oven cooking, really. I never made them for myself, because uh, I like making simple food for myself. And then, my wife mo mostly cooks Japanese food, so we've never really talked about doing a corn shen. <clears throat> Here in Brazil, we call them uh, galeta. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, cool. <coughs> Focus on walking so I won't be able to avoid danger. If I get hurt too badly, I won't be able to play anymore. I'm able to get deep underground. I'll show you where the hot spring water will bubble up. Cook it for your dog to make pat uh, pate. Ooh, lucky dog. <laughs> Hear the explanation again? I am fine. Thank you for defaulting to I am fine. The hot spring digging game begin! I really... That wasn't particularly descriptive. This is... Okay, this is much better. Use the Y and the X to break the rocks. Once you get your companion at the bottom, they'll tell you where to start digging. Rocks come in many styles. Pay careful attention to different types as you make your descent. The game ends when the time limit is up. If you or your companion take damage, you'll lose time. Be careful. You can find more time hidden inside the giant bugs, so don't pass them up. Use various celestial brush techniques to break rocks and progress. Chop rocks. I can chop the dude to turn him around. I can blow them up. I guess I can make him sprint. Husky, he eats when he wants to. Oh, I bet he does. Ow, I just walked onto a thing. I'm an idiot. See, that's the kind of digging I thought we were going to do. Uh, hmm. Oh, God. How do I... Maybe I need to... Hmm. Bomb this out? Okay, so I did this. All right. All right. Getting there, I guess. Dig, 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 dig. 
Pretty sure you can just dig harder on the blocks too. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Uh well, this sucks. Can I have to break this? Oh man, I would really like to break that. You can kinda of ground pound. It's gonna be okay, buddy. It's gonna be great. There's money in that one. How do you ground? I don't even know. Anyway. The bombs seem to be working okay. Or not. Oh god, no! Ah, oh, shit. I need to turn him around. Alright, you get up. I just inked on him. Yeah, the timer doesn't stop in brush mode. I didn't notice that. Yeah, this way. This way, please, buddy. The sand you can dig? Okay. Oh, wait. These are the ones that I can chop. Oh, my god. Okay. Uh, hang on. Okay. No, 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 buddy, 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 buddy. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, well, I guess we made it. I hope, ish. Can I drop that down here? Perfect. Wow, that's a terrible circle. Here, okay. How do I... Dig an actual hole here? Oh, okay, you just, you just dig an actual hole. All right, well, that was a fucking comedy of errors. I, I, I will be the first to admit I did that really stupidly. I definitely, like, yeah. Like Nemrin said, I should have tried actually digging, and I just didn't, so. <clears throat> but hey, it worked out. The water's flowing again. See, I told you, my bamboo wear never lies. Well done, Amy. Yeah, game is very forgiving, and I appreciate that very much. Thank you, both of you. I'll never forget this. You both have free access to the bathhouse whenever you want. I, buddy, I just want you to put the torches out, okay? You make me nervous. Yeah, this is seriously one of my favorite things to do. I, I started streaming just over three years ago, and it's like... I've gradually worked up from, from streaming like twice a week to every every single night except Sunday. And like like streaming like gives me energy. It like it's 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 a very uplifting experience for me. So I get I get just as much out of this as as my audience does, I hope. So yeah. If not more. This has been, like, like the streaming like this has been hugely helpful for me during the pandemic. Because I started, I started working from home so early, like, like so early on in it. <clears throat> and then, of course, my kids were out of school and they were, we were all stuck here in, in our house together. Um, but without, without much opportunity to see other folks. So yeah, streaming late in the evening after everybody else goes to bed was like a huge, like huge stress relief for me, really. Glad to participate in that. I'm glad you dropped by tonight. I'm, I'm, it's always nice to, to find another appreciator of fine games. Okay, I mean, it's happening again. <gasps> New brush? New brush! New brush! Is this the booze constellation? Because I'm okay with that. Snake! 
Oh shit, you're right, it's the Snake Constellation! It's the Super Snake Ball Constellation? <laughs> well, I guess I live here now. <laughs> snake Friend! Man, put this guy in Super Monkey Ball. <clears throat> badger, badger, badger. Ah, Amaterasu, origin of all that is good and mother to us all. I have remained hidden here, creeping along the water's surface. I, Nuragami, god of water, am happy to bestow upon you my power. Moisten the thirsty earth and restore the glory of nature. Moisten. It just, it just rolls off the tongue. Moisten. Another Banana Mania character. Try the Okamiden next, it's the sons of all the animals. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> Nirigami? Oh, that's the god of water. Must mean you got the water spout brush technique. He, he set himself on fire. I tried to warn you, bro. Fire, but fire! Now the fried drumsticks were a bad idea. Lucky for you, Amy needs some practice. Hey, try to put out that fire with the power of water spout. Brush technique that harnesses the power of water. Place your brush over water and then draw a line. The water's power will pass into the line, creating a stream. Enough talk, you better try it before it becomes a, becomes a crispy critter. Okay. That was pretty straightforward. Excellent. No fried sparrow for you, but at least you can make a stream. Power of water spout doesn't stop there. See that bubbling water in the middle of the hot spring? That's called a power spring. Water power is concentrated there. If you draw a line straight up from that bubbling water, they can create an amazing column of water. Hmm? Ooh. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, and there's some shit up there. I made a way up to the shit. And control power springs. Nice. I didn't know you could do that. Maybe we could use this to find treasure in high places? Draw a water column whenever we see a power spring. Okay, I remember at least one place for that. And I think there were probably several. Actually, water elevator reminds me of Minecraft of all things. Because I remember people figured out a way to make like like, the easiest way to make a, an elevator in that game for the longest time was to make a waterfall and then stick a boat in it. Because the boat would just shoot up to the top of, of the water, even if it was a waterfall. So, like, boom. Instant elevator. It looks like there's some other stuff up here, but I don't think we can reach it. Whee! So if I, if I just make a power spring, do we jump on it automatically or like, what's, how does it actually work? All right. All right, cool. Didn't expect it to work like that, but okay. Hmm. That's one big, huge, that's one huge bamboo tube. Something really, this big really work? This thing's tipped back and forth on the way to water inside him. I don't know if it's plugged up or what, but sure ain't moving. I've seen smaller ones in gardens that don't need much water, but something the size would need some major hydropower. Well, you know what we can do. Boom. Oh, that was a button. All right, yeah. Don't worry, we'll be here. I have made a thing happen. Herbs, no! Burbs, I'm sorry. I'm just so excited to be here. All right, welcome back, Burbs. I think 
my next cheapest upgrade is a 140. I think that's what I saw. Uh, hello? Hi, are you okay? Really, really want to see, uh, see you deal with some 3D Zelda water temples? I bet you do. I bet you would love that. Tweet! Tweet! Well, I'm gonna let a Tweety here. What's with all the chirping, kid? Don't call me kid. I have a name, you know, it's Ty. I'm not chirping, I'm crying. Tweet! Tweet! They have rice balls on their uh, kimono. Cry baby Ty. Even the game makes fun of you. That freaky cry of yours. Take's lost. He disappeared while we were out for a walk. Tweet, tweet. Who's Take? Is he a friend of yours? He's my dog. I lost my dog. Lots of lost dogs in this game. Aha! -ha. Important lost dog. They're clearly hamburgers. <laughs> Eat your hamburgers, Ty. The canine tracker suddenly appeared. That must mean. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's a tiger. Ah, but we're we're at peace with all animals of the world. Come, tiger friendo. They're jelly donuts, duh. <laughs> I work in localization, game localization specifically, and one of one of our favorite things ever is that old Eat Your Hamburgers Apollo comic. I may or may not have gotten engrossed and stayed. Well, I apologize for being so engrossing. Sometimes I don't know my own grossness. <laughs> hmm? You see what I see, Amy? Unless I'm hallucinating or something, which is entirely possible. That bamboo over there looks like it's flashing. Maybe we'll find something interesting inside if we cut it down. Welcome back, Nian. Glad you made it. We appear to have found some bamboo grove circles. Chapo. Bingo! Oh good, I only had to sacrifice one tree to find this dude. One of your favorite games? This game is wildly popular with a lot of people. I've had, so we're on, this is what, night four of Okami? And I'm pretty sure every single night we've had different people come in and be like, this dude is my favorite game ever. This is a very good game. It's also my first time playing it. I, I missed it when it originally came out. Uh, I bought it. I bought the this the HD version on Steam ages ago, and then just never got around to playing it. But yeah, the further I get into it, the more I can see of why people appreciate this game so much. Taki's back. Taki, what's wrong, boy? Why are you growling? Wait, wait a minute. Is this white wolf who spirited you away? Dog looks like your Balto. Nice. Give me a break. Hey, wait, I think this flea bag's trying to say something, hmm? White wolf. What right do you have to bear the canine tracker? Don't make, no, come on. What, what about, what about the kinship of canines? Gee. Hey, that Amy? Must be one of the canine warriors. That canine tracker really set him off. What'll it be? Fine. Fine, you asked for this. Put up the shut up, dog. Oh, hello. So this guy has counters. <laughs> oh. Counters pretty fast, too. Yeah. 
think we got him. Yep, there we go. A lot of great moments in here on top of beautiful visuals and amazing soundtrack. It's, it's the art that really gets me. I absolutely adore the way this game looks. Absolutely. Balto is a silly dog. We've been talking about getting a dog. Um, I grew up with cats, but after I moved out of my parents' house, I somehow developed an allergy to cats. And I think I think my wife and kids are more inclined towards towards dogs. So we've been we've been loosely discussing the possibility of getting a dog sometime. But I, I would definitely want a silly dog. Or at the very least a cuddly one. Oz the hamburger comic. I true classic. True classic. Cut it out, leave him alone. I won't allow you to bully Take like that. Keep it up and I'll clobber you. What are you saying, Tweety? We're not bullying anybody. Right, you flea bag? Come on. We're not bullying anyway. Right, flea bag? Come on, talk, you piece of shit. I know Princess Fuse summons me. It is my duty to defeat Crimson Helm, defiler of the Gale Shrine. But I cannot return. This place is in grave danger. The monsters will overrun Sasa Sanctuary without me. The Sparrow Tribe, they would all be... Oh, what shall I do? I mean, we can fix this shit. Three cats, nice. Yeah, I always had... Like, we always had one house cat. We had one house cat before I was born. Duty Orb. No jokes, please, chat. Uh, we had a house cat before I was born, and then he passed away when I was in middle school, I think. Then we got another house cat. And then after I went away to college, my parents started adopting strays. There was a little white cat, a little white kitten, that, uh, that started coming around my parents' house. And they would feed her, and then she'd disappear for a while. And then one day, months later, she showed up with three kittens in tow. So my parents ended up adopting all four of them. And then after that, they started volunteering at, a, at an animal shelter. Um, and specifically taking care of the cats. And they would take home the more difficult cats and foster them for a while, and then, in several cases, end up keeping them, too. At bronchitis since childhood, it got less worse since I got cats. Oh, that's interesting. I've, I've never heard of cats having that effect, but that's, that's pretty interesting. And good for you, definitely. Silly and cuddly. Pities are great and they aren't super huge. While, being, while not being so tiny, you'll lose them. They get a bad rap, you just gotta raise them, right? Yeah, I think I think I need I need like a beginner dog. Like I was I was doing a little bit of research and I know I know some breeds like huskies, like you kind of like they have specific needs that you have to be aware of and you kind of have to be more experienced to take care of them. Oh, it's not that simple. It says the power orb has chosen you, I need worry no longer. To remain here and battle the monsters for the sparrow tribe. You can separate the hearts of the canine warriors, beat as one. Huh? Wait, wait, wait a second. You know, I could just... <laughs> okay, whatever. I suppose it'll make sense eventually. Yeah, I could just fight these things for you, you know. Every dog has a personality. Well, yeah, it, it, it's the same for cats. Certainly. But I know I... Okay, so may maybe it was more specific to those individual dogs, because I was looking at adoption sites and, like, some of them... Like, I, I remember seeing a husky, where I was like, um, like, this, this one can be particularly difficult and needs an, an experienced owner. So maybe that was less about the breed and more about the specific dog then, so... Happy rabbit. I had, I had neighbors when I was a kid. They had a pet rabbit. It was the biggest rabbit I've ever seen in my life. Thing was the size of a watermelon. And it pretty much just lounged in its cage all day. It was seriously like Jabba the Hutt in rabbit form. Kind of, kind of majestic in its own way. Just majestic in scope, really. Anyway, we got an orb. Tigers love me. I think we did some good work. 
Let's go see what we can do about those other two doggos. Now, it'll be interesting if the other two doggos give up their orbs too. Like, can one dog actually take more than one orb, I wonder? I suppose we'll find out. Ah, oh, what a fabulous hot spring. Wolfie, I heard a ruckus from afar, but why don't you wash off all that grime in the hot spring? I think we'll pass. Anyway, isn't it about time you started looking for bamboo? Cats aren't domesticated. Cats are accustomed with humans or another species. About dogs. You're right. The festival is just around the corner. It falls on the night of the full moon. Night of the full moon. Yep. Kamiki Village holds the Kamiki Festival on the night of the full moon during this time of year. You've heard the legend of how the great heroes Nagi and Shirinui defeated the terrible beast with the help of the gods, haven't you? That's why the village pays homage to the gods in the sacred tree. This year is the 100th anniversary of the beast's defeat. I better finish that bamboo where I want to sell at the festival. Hot dog! I just love festivals. Gotta remember to go back to Kamiki Village on that day. That's why they classify dogs into work dogs, terror dogs, company dogs. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they certainly don't do that for cats. <clears throat> yes, it was cool when I did that. <laughs> By the way, Wolfie, I'd like to give you a little something to thank you for your help in the hot spring digging game. It isn't much, but you may find it useful. Here you go. Mermaid coin. There was a mermaid pool somewhere. That's some grubby pocket change. There are many small springs known as mermaid springs across Nippon. They say you can pass it. <gasps> Did I just get fast travel? If true, you could travel across Nippon in the blink of an eye. I think I did. Those are some wicked coins. This must be extremely valuable. No, not really. You can even buy them at stores around here. I only kept it because it was kind of cute. I don't have much, so you'll have to excuse me. Okay. It's almost festival season. Full moon will rise. Yep, 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 yep. I was thinking of Kaguya when I talked about the moon. Oh, how she used to love gazing up the moon. Don't worry about it. Nyan, you're fine. <clears throat> I just, I, I like talking to ch with chat about whatever's on y'all's mind. And sometimes, sometimes chat gets away from me and goes off and, t and starts talking about their own things, and that's cool too. Oh, Durza, thank you so much for the bits. That is incredibly generous of you. Really got to bounce this time. Have a good night. You too. Pleasure to see you as always, and thanks again. End up in the poorhouse if I don't finish my bamboo wear soon. Oh my god, look at you. And thank you for the follow as well. Can you, can you stop? Tasty fried drumsticks are saved! I'm in your debt, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Could you... Can I... Can I dunk this guy in the water? Oh no, he, he doesn't want to be bit. Yeah, he doesn't like that. Okay. Remember one time going to PetSmart to get some stuff for my cats, and the girl ringed me up and asked what kind of cats I had, and I just blankly stared at her and was like, uh... Cats? <laughs> like, the, the furry kind? The bathhouse is famous for its powerful geyser, you know? You feel like you're flying when you're on top of the water jet. Oh, goodness. That is one jiggly burb. Last, the bathhouse is back to normal, and there's nothing like being the first one in. Good for you. My mom had a book of, uh, of uh, cat breeds that I, I used to pore over when I was a kid because I was, I was fascinated <coughs> by all the different kinds. And it would go through their personality, so I've forgotten a lot of it. All right, I guess, we can, I guess we're done here. I guess we can head out. There's a save point right around here. Yep. Making 
good progress on filling all of the save slots that exist. Can I just say, I really love the way this weapon looks on Amy's back. Like, all the weapons look really cool in their own ways, but I just love the way this one... That's so neat. The way it splits apart and reforms. Love that. Okay, there's a waterfall over there. There might be some kind of pool or something. Had a German Shepherd, Collie, Dotson, Mixed Rottweiler, Australian Cattle Dog, and now a Husky. Wow. Probably the best looking weapon. It's just it's so cool. Is this a geyser or a mermaid pond? Probably the best looking weapon, top three. I think this mer may be a mermaid pool. No! No, I hate it, get out! Yeah, Mermaid Spring, okay. Did I talk to you? Oh yeah, you're just on about the Mermaid Spring. Um, This probably isn't how this works, but I just want to see. Yeah, I like that. I'm expecting you fire for that. Holy boner. How do you end up with a sanctified boner, I wonder? I shouldn't wonder about that too hard. All right. All right, so we want to head back towards the forest. We can do that. Might be a bit of a haul. That's probably why they taught us about mermaid coins just now. I could teleport if I wanted. But I am also extremely stubborn. Yeah, we took care of that. We Oh, hello. So I guess buried chests show up a lot easier at night. They glow more brightly. Two dogs on all those breeds which are the best. Our second mixed German Shepherd with Kali called Lobo and Baldo. Balto. So the best for you were the German Shepherd Kali mix and the Husky. Nice. <clears throat> how do you how do you feel about small dogs, Nan? Because I, I I feel like the, the dog lovers in my life are kind of like an either or. Like they either like really big dogs or they like really small dogs. And there's not really much in between. Was there something? <coughs> the cave. I remember now, the cave. Had two Dotsons and one ACD. There's a geyser there. Oh, there's a ledge up there that I never noticed. Okay, cool. Ah, the Australian cattle dog. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha.
This is a cool power, I like this. All right, let's make a neat geyser. I bounced off the water. That is the thing that just happened. Ah, okay. There's a ledge up there, but... Can I actually make that? Oh, I can. Oh, whew. okay. Nice, 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 nice. And it's some black to wear. Fair enough, I suppose. Mm, this is some kind of geode cluster. I think I tried to chop this before. Yeah. I think we're gonna need some kind of chop upgrade at some point. All right, so... Oh, straight ahead apparently is where we wanna be looking. <clears throat> the Australian cattle dog was the worst and the best at the same time. She was the smartest, most obedient, but she was a demon with food. Uh... Yep, I could I could see that being pretty difficult. Our best dog was our old English sheepdog mix. Favorite was the Dotson mix, but Charlie was sweet, smart, and protective. Oh, that sounds very nice. Deep abyss, you say. She befriended everyone, but not with food. <laughs> Let's see if these folks can help me. See, my son Kokari has been totally obsessed with fishing lately. Where he's not respecting nature like he should. He's not careful, he could get himself in all kinds of trouble. Alright, I passed him on the way. He's right over here. Uh, Dad works nights at the time. After he'd go to work, my mom would walk around the house to make sure everything was locked and go to bed. Charlie walked it with her and he knew once the house was locked, no one was allowed in until Mom got up. That's cool. That's really cool. Dogs are so smart. It's you again. Hey, have you seen my dog, Ume? He's always with me and wait a minute. Ume was dressed like one of the Guardian Canines. That only just clicked in my brain. Always with me on fishing. He disappeared when I wasn't looking. You don't think he could have fallen in the deep abyss, do you? Water in the deep abyss has always been a bit murky, but today you can barely see into it, and the surface is all rippling. My fisherman's intuition tells me the legendary fish is awoken. People call it... Whopper! They say it swallowed the moon, reflected on the water's surface. You don't think Whopper swallowed up Ume, too, do you? I can't find him alone. I'm gonna go talk to that lady who's visiting Hito Itoshio Spring. Where was that? Dog would not let dad in until mom came and said it was okay. So wait, where's... Lobo, as a child when we got him, he was so cute. My parents were always afraid he was going to attack everyone, like his older brother. Same mix. Hmm. <coughs> so, wait, do I need to go somewhere else for this? Hmm. It was so sweet.
I found that a lot of a, a lot of the big dogs that I've known have been very, very gentle. It all it almost seems to me like like they realize how big they are and they like they don't want to hurt anybody. Just just as a result of their bigness. And I think that Bal uh, Balto's Lobo's reincarnation. Interesting to think about, isn't it? But you never know, maybe maybe it, it's behavior learned from you. Mix Rottweiler is a demon with some people. Picky about the company he keeps, huh? Good morning, Cornudo. How you doing today? I really just wherever that spring was, I just I do not remember. Home of the Whopper. I guess I could go search for the other dog first. Staffordshire Bull Terrier is either super friendly or just ignores people. There's no in between. Never aggressive. Oh, that's the way I came. I can't figure out how to change my sub badge. Okay, it's it's in your settings. It's under the security tab. Down, I near the bottom, I think, of the security tab, there should be a thing about uh, to turn off your uh, founder's badge. With you, your dad, and one of the aunties that work in your house is forever you. She's the dumbest dog ever. Was it, was it just this? Was it this simple? It was this simple. Hey, you found it, yeah. Check it out, there's your Super Nintendo game. I, I love these sub badges so much. My buddy is, I I think my buddy's a fantastic pixel artist. Like, I really, really love the way these games came out. <coughs> Staffs are so beautiful. The water here is so lovely and cool. Now, time to get to work. Here's the barrel. Look at here, it's Kushi. What's up to here, sweetie? How's you, Snowy and Isun? You're making preparations for the annual Kamiki Festival. Time to get water for the holy sake we offer to the gods. People say the water here at Hitoshio Spring has divine powers. We always mix it with the holy sake we use for the festival. That way we can make eight purification sake. Well, hold it right there, sister. Eight purification sake? You mean the sacred drink of ancient legend? That's right, it goes back to the legend of Nagi and Shirinui. It's the miraculous sake that they used to defeat Orochi. Apparently they got the beast drunk and cut off its heads. It certainly smells strong enough to intoxicate anything. I don't know if the legend's really true or not, but we offer sake to the gods at the festival time and pray for peace. Friends are suffering with their dog, with their second child. Ah, oh, is it tough balancing them? That's, <coughs> that's the main reason I've held off on getting a pet. Like, I mean, I grew up around, I was an only child in a house full of cats. So I, I definitely grew up loving animals, but I, I had to consider how difficult it would be to raise kids of my own and and have pets around. Just as I did there, I always respond with thank you and then feel weird because it's not like I did anything to make her so adorable. The boy, the first one, the dog didn't uh, didn't do anything with him. The second one. By the way, sweetie, I was wondering, you plan on filling this barrel with water? That's right, we need enough for all the villagers. I have to fill this barrel to the brim. How are you gonna fill such a big barrel with water? If you can, how are you gonna carry it back to the village? Hmm? That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that, because Susano usually takes care of it. He can handle the barrel as if it was light as a feather. I know I can manage on my own, though. Silly of me not to think this through. I wonder how I'm going to get spring water into the barrel. 
That I can help with. Oh, you still have more to say. I guess this is the this is the perspective we want. That's odd. How did the water get in the barrel all by itself? With the girl the second one, the dog did bite her, didn't even leave a mark. Oh, I hope that means it was like playful biting. What are your thoughts on Okami so far? Very, like, it's an absolutely gorgeous game. Um, really interesting. It's, it's, like, chill almost, almost to its own detriment, I feel like. It's such a relaxing game. I've noticed some nights I've streamed it, I've, I've gotten, like, really, really tired by the end of the stream. Just because it's, it's such a relaxing experience. <coughs> Excuse me. Yay! How wonderful! The barrel's full of spring water already. Oh, the mom wants to get rid of the dog? Ooh. I mean, I can, I can kind of understand, like, you, you know, being particularly concerned for your child's safety, but... Yeah, that's a tough situation. That's a tough situation. I would definitely want to keep the dog, but yeah, that uncertainty, especially with a young child, that, that would make me nervous. As much as I love animals, that would make me super nervous. Excellent, now we just have to get it back to the village. Here at home, it must weigh a ton. Uh-oh. <laughs> He's the answer to the child. <laughs> Do you want some of the spring water? No. He wants to play you the song of his people. Sorry, I'll be getting this barrel anyway soon. What? Huh? Bad boss, the gameplay is just like, Prappa, what's up, library man? Can always make more later. Back, you beast! Hey, it's Popeye! Here I am, just taking a walk, and look what I run into. Oh, it's you! Susano? Take one more step towards the lady, and it'll be your last. Wow, they're going all out. Great Susano, descender of the Hironagi, forbids it! D do not despair, my fair Kushi. Susano is here to save the day. It's some great animations, too. So. I'm a veterinarian assistant, I know the owners. They never did the basic training of the dog, nor the ch Oh, okay. Well, on, on the bright side, I mean that... There's still hope then, right? I feel like you should be able to train one or the other in how to interact with them. When she said that, I was like, really? Oh, I bet. I bet. That's That's gotta be frustrating. I swing my sword in the name of love. It's a Sano style sword of passion. Here I go. Oh. Chop. Chop. A little quick on the draw on that one. Huh? Dog is super chill, so it's safe. I still get alarmed by how my parents let their kids just run up and start petting your head without any kind of hello. Susanna, watch out! They try the wrong dog, it won't end. Well, that's for damn sure. Fortunately, both of my kids are really cautious. I mean, my my older daughter is nervous around animals in general. Like, she just doesn't know what to do. Uh, and then my younger daughter loves animals. She absolutely loves them. But she's also nervous. 
So she wants to pet them, but she absolutely will not without asking for it. So it's, it, it's kind of the perfect combination there. They're, they're naturally cautious around animals. I don't have a pet, no. We've been talking about getting a dog now that we've moved into a bigger place with a yard. But we we haven't we haven't taken any serious action. Yeah, and it's rude. Yeah, don't don't just run around touching people's pets. Jesus. It's like running around touching somebody's hair. Hey, you did it, Pops. That was amazing. It kinda scared at first, but you pulled it off for the for the lady. Dog would be work, but good for them. But a lot of work, but good. Yeah. That's the thing. Part of it is so every year, at least before the pandemic, we would go, we would take a trip to visit my, my wife's parents in Japan for at least two weeks, sometimes as long as three weeks. And so if we had a pet, we would either have to take them or board them or something. Because a, a dog, a, a, you know, you couldn't, you absolutely couldn't leave a dog alone for that long. Would say huskies, but they're kind of tricky. Huskies <laughs> are so pretty, though. Dogs are boring. Get a lizard instead. I always wanted a lizard, specifically a gecko when I was a kid. I would get a snake. My older daughter wants a snake, too. I love snakes. I think they're super fascinating, but my wife would just flip her shit if we did that. You'd all love the dogs. Get one. You could board them. Dogs are good for kids, especially in a family like yours where you can I, I know it would be good. I know it would be good for us, but it would also be additional work. So I think when we get a little bit more settled, because my kids are going back to school tomorrow. Um, so, and, and we're also talking about some, some activities that both of them want to do, like after school stuff, weekend stuff. So we still haven't quite settled into a full routine here at the new house. Um... I, I imagine once we're a bit more comfortable here and, and lived in, we might talk about it more seriously. A friend of mine had Akitas when we were in high school. Awesome dogs. If you go get a husky, go see the parents before the puppies. Is, so if you go see the parents, is that going to kind of indicate what their personality is going to be like, maybe? They would love doggos more than sports balls. Uh, thank you. I didn't expect to see such ferocious monsters here. Are you hurt? Susana? I knew it. I knew it all along. Strange things have been happening ever since then. First that boulder in Kamiki, then that battle with the bear, and now this. My sword is possessed by a strange power. Uh, the cat- <laughs> thank you for the follow. <laughs> Had a sweet Great Dane, best dog ever, too long, walks a day, and then 20 plus hours of napping on the couch. Wow. That sounds like a cat. Except for the long walks. <laughs> it would just be the napping. Unrelated uh, to Okami, but Psychonauts 2 has been really something so far. I, I've, I've been hearing people talk about Psychonauts 2, and it sounded like the consensus to me was like, it's- it's real, it's like just a really solid sequel. Like it's more Psychonauts. Play the first bit last night, it seemed like exactly what you wanted from Psychonauts 2. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've been hearing. Vote something small or something that barks less and doesn't demand lots of extra effort. Herding dogs are difficult in cities. Two types of Huskies, the Siberians and the Canadian. Okay. Great Danes think they're lap dogs. Perfect apartment dog, nice. The Siberians are smaller and the Canadians are bigger. <coughs> Listen to me, O oh spirit who defiles my sword. I shall not be controlled like some puppet. By the gods, I shall expose your nefarious scheme. Eh? Rose, wolf spit. Magnificent Eason takes offense. Why, I oughta. Where's Susanna? 
Oh, we're also still waiting on some of our furniture. We brought all of our furniture from our old place. Um, we ordered new furniture, but... <coughs> Excuse me. It's gonna be dry in here tonight. We ordered some new furniture for this place. We ordered like a new dining room set, a new sofa, a new TV stand. Some of it's supposed to come, I think, next month. Some of it's not going to come until, like, November. So, with that in mind, it's it's almost like we're not, we're not yet, like, fully moved in and adjusted here. Aussie Shepherds are the smartest dogs I've ever known. I worked in a pet shop and we had one for a while. Do dog not only figured out how to get out of her own kennel, she figured out how to open all of them within reach? Holy shit. That's amazing. That was really cool. He left without saying a word. What was he thinking? He just won the battle. Now it's time to win the damsel's heart. At least he could have stuck around to help carry the barrel. It's okay. I think he's busy with other things. There's no need to bother him with this. I'm sure I can manage on my own from here anyway. Get to have a series of moving parties. What is that? That sounded like that Kokari kid. Is he in trouble again? I better go check it out, Amy. Ah, canine tracker, nice. So that means, you know what that means. Okay, I wanna say something real quick. So I have, I have a pet peeve in games, and it's where you have an adventure game, maybe it's a point and click, maybe it's an open world adventure game, whatever. And you need, you know what you need to do. Like you need to, you need to like talk to this person, right? But the developers for whatever reason have decided that something has to happen before you can do that. Like the person you need to talk to doesn't show up until you go to this specific place and like witness a cutscene or something happening, right? Happens all the time in point and click adventures. You get super stuck, you have no idea what to do, you go to every screen and click on everything, and then you just happen across this one screen and like a thing happens, and all of a sudden now you can, now you can progress with the plot, right? The reason I bring this up is I feel like this game just did that the right way. Like, we know what we're supposed to be doing right now. We're supposed to be finding Kokiri's dog because he's one of the guardians. We figured that out. We put that together. We need to find his dog, but we can't. Like, the game just wouldn't really give us the tools to do it. We talked to him and he's like, he disappeared. I don't know where he went, whatever. But he mentioned that he was gonna to talk to the woman at the spring, the woman that came to the spring. So we went and talked to her, which is essentially a totally unrelated thing, right? <coughs> but as a result of doing that, it progressed the other thing. So you need to go a little further to do that. I guess what I'm getting at is it frustrates me when games are structured like this, but they don't give you an indication of what to do. Like, I would have been really, really frustrated if we came here looking for the dog and, <coughs> and the game wouldn't let us find the dog. Like, it wouldn't give us the canine tracker, wouldn't do anything, the kid wouldn't tell us anything. And we just had to wander around until we ran into that woman. But they gave us a clear link. They, they, they sent us in that direction, even though I couldn't remember where the spring was. They sent us there to do that. And so everything progressed smoothly. Everything made sense. What I'm really saying here is I really appreciate the way this game is laid out. And the way everything is paced in this. Because some games do a really, really bad job of that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow, looks like you got a big one there, kid. With all that noise you're making, I was sure the monsters. Holy shit! <laughs> like when you knew what you had to do with Mrs. Cutter, but the game wouldn't give you a bite prompt until you'd been in the second. Yeah, yeah, essentially the same thing. And you know what? That worked out okay, too. I went there, I didn't get the bite prompt, I was confused, but I was like, I'm sure this will make sense later, and indeed it did. That's a whoppa! There, there's your dog. Shoot, by the line snap. Curse you, whopper! I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! You're gonna pay for what you did to me! Where did that, hum that humongous fish come from? Wasn't that your dog Ume in its mouth? That was the legendary fish Whopper. They say it swallowed the moon. Yes, we, we we told us all this before. That dog sure does get eaten a lot, doesn't he? That's right. The same dog got ate, eaten by the spider. And curse you, Whoppa, and you too, Big Mac. Snag that Whopper yet? Shall be a battle to avenge Ume. Amy, this is getting more interesting by the minute. A whopper or whatever it's called would be quite a catch. Stick around and see if we can help him catch it. You bet! That's what I wanted to hear. Let's get psyched up! Alright. <coughs> Alright, you got the basic idea, right? Yes, yes. We've been we've done plenty of fishing, it's fine. Chop. Alright. It's serious fishing time. Woo. This is a little one. Killy fish. I don't think he's killing anybody. Okay, that looks like him. I got a bite. Very curious how difficult this is gonna be. I guess this, since this is plot, they're not gonna make it that hard. I want to combo him. Like I want to hit him multiple times, but huh? The kid has a life bar too. Does he always have that when we're fishing, or is that new? Oh, okay. You caught the Wappa! That's actually easier than some of the smaller fish we caught uh, last time. That Oh, that's a stamina. Okay, I've never paid attention to that. I knew I could do it. And I finally caught Whopper. That was one big fucking fish. <laughs> and here I was so worried about you, kid. You're one fine fisherman. You should be proud of yourself. Keep on fishing. And make sure to bring along plenty of line. How could I ever fish again? I mean, what about Ume? He's never coming back. Ah, oh boy, the crybaby's back. I mean, he thought his dog got et. Come on, man. Don't worry, after all you... Huh? Hey, we restored the moon. The surface of deep abysses is as bright and shiny as a mirror. The moon's reflection sure looks beautiful. Hmm? Where's the moon? How come I can only see his reflection? 
No way. Sweet. Oh my gosh, the moon rabbits. It's the mochi making moon rabbits. Love these guys. Fuck that mochi up. Yeah, get him. This is this is not exaggeration. This is literally how you make mochi. I have I have watched people in Japan do this. That rabbit is pissed. Uh, Amaterasu, origin of all that is good and mother to us all. After your departure, I hid myself within the moon's reflection. Piss rabbit are awesome. Consumed by a fish, I patiently awaited this day in its belly. That's fucked up. Now that a glimmer of hope has returned, I have returned. Ah, Yumigami, god of the moon, cover the earth in pale moonlight. <clears throat> Use this light in conjunction with your own on your perilous journey. So does this mean I can finally s switch the time to night? At will? You got me the god of moon power. The whopper really did swallow up the moon reflected on the water. Now you have the crescent brush technique. That one lets you draw a crescent moon in the sky. Said to have the power turn day into night. Yes, perfect, okay. <clears throat> Could drawing a curved line in the sky really bring out the moon? One way to find out, bro. Didn't work. Are you really trying? Day? Are you? Are you really gonna sh give me shit because I drew, what, a waxing moon instead of a waning moon? Yes. You know what I love most in this game? What is that, Nian? What is your favorite part of this game? The moon, the moon, it's come out. Now you have the power to turn day into night. Maybe the nighttime pleasures that wait. No, that sounds tempting, but first things first. We still have that matter with Princess Fuse. We still have that matter Princess Fuse asked us to deal with. Welcome back, doggo. Hey! They added the cat in the Zodiac. Hey, Azume! He came out of Whopper's mouth! You okay, boy? I knew it spit him out. But I told you not to worry. I mean, just look at him. He looks like one nasty tasting canine. Really? Yeah. Never seen an uglier looking dog. Oh my god, dude. It's a pink Shiba. That would be absolutely adorable in real life. Why is Isun the worst? <clears throat> Why does he have to be such a tiny piece of shit? Did I say something wrong? I'm trying to have a little fun like I do with Furball here. White Wolf, how did you come to bear the canine tracker? Familiar scent in the air, my former comrades. It emanates from your body. What? It's none of your business how we smell. I don't know, but he really is. It's just that we don't like taking baths, that's all. Hey, wait. Did you say something about the canine tracker? Canine Tracker decrees that his bearer shall prove his strength. I shall be the one to test it. Motherfucker, you couldn't beat a fish. You think you're gonna beat me? Andy, this dog needs business. The story will be left for the game to tell you. I am I am very excited to see where else this story is gonna go. Because every night it's some new weird shit going on. And all of it has been great. Isun is basically Twitch chat, but in-game. Hang on. Oh, oh. Jesus, this guy's really serious. He has explosive counters. And a serious combo. 
Chibi Inu, or Akita, mostly Akita. Well, ain't nothing now. Yo. Sorry, I killed your dog. I knew Princess Fuse summons me. It is my duty to defeat Crimson Helm, Defiler of Gale Shrine. This child of the father saved me from certain death. I owe my life to them. What am I to do? Give me your ball. Some man manages a backseat while also not paying atten any attention to what's going on. Again, just like Twitch chat. Justice Orb. What's this? The power Orb has chosen you. I don't need to worry anymore. So I'll spend the rest of my years here under the guise of Ume. What? You're not going back to the princess? After all we went through? That was some fight. Guess the Animal Kingdom's a rough place. It's a lot more complicated than people think. All right, sweet. Let's see if we can get the last dog tonight. Um, so further up the coast. Thinking on a friendly dog with children and stuff. Staffies are actually amazing with children. I don't know if you can get them in America. Oh, I'm sure you can. I mean, the question would be how expensive. And personally, like, I'm... If if we do get a pet, I would I would, I would want to adopt one with a, from a shelter. So I'm probably not going to be real, real picky about the breed. Ours was a rescue. All right, this is the wrong ass way. Rescues are awesome and definitely the way, the way you go. To this day, I still think about this cat that was, uh, that was at the animal shelter that my parents volunteered at. He was the biggest cat I have ever, this is this huge white cat with smudges of brown and gray. And I forget his name. His name was like, it was ridiculous. His name was like Thunderbolt or something. Like just this gigantic, huge, muscly cat with the name Thunderbolt. And he fucking loved everybody to death. You would let him out of that cage and he would just like, he would just like roll like all over you. He would flop. He would mash his head into you. He was the sweetest cat I've ever seen in my life. And I still think about him to this day. I wish there could have been some way I could have adopted him and like had him now. But I'm, I'm sure he went to a, a good home and lavished them with love. <clears throat> would have got him in one sec, yeah. He was, he was, perf he was like the perfect cat. There we go. Uh, there we don't go. What the hell is this place? Have I never been in here before? <clears throat> Damn, I got a whole ass incense burner. I have one big orange cat, he's the sweetest. Something about big cats. Something about big cats, they just, I, I don't know, they just, all the ones that I've, I've, I've been around have been really, really friendly, or at the very least, really, really chill. Like that, um, that family that my parents took him, the mom and, and the three boys. 
Their personalities couldn't have been any different. And one of the boys, all right, Justin Brett, thanks for coming out. It was great to see you. One of the boys, so the mama cat was white. Um, her boys, one was white, and then there were two like tuxedo black ones. And like the tuxedo black ones, they're almost like twins, but one was like twice as big as the other one. And the one that was twice as big was like the biggest baby ever. Like he just wanted to get in your lap and relax and he was scared of everything. Whereas the little one was like, he was like practically feral. Um, he spent like all of his time outside. He didn't like being petted or anything. And then the white one was just insane. He was everywhere at once. He would climb on everything. He would get into everything. Any calico or tortoise? Uh, I... I've never had a calico or a tortoise. <clears throat> uh, I've had, I've had tabbies, our second house cat was a great big tabby. Tricolors are insane. All right, so where the hell is this doggo? Oh, this doggo's back in Kamiki. Didn't expect that. Well, let's go. Okay, that's a mermaid pond. Oldest pet is a calico. Hey, look, it's a gate, I guess we never did. Go kick some ass. How did I not do this one? Hmm. <laughs> Talking about pets, Makes me want to get a. Talking about cats makes me want to get a cat, but I'm I'm pretty sure a dog would be better for us overall. Last thing I want to do is fuck up my allergies too. I had the worst allergies when I lived out out east in North Carolina. I think it I think it must have been the plants out there. Because as soon as I'm as soon as I moved to Japan, I did not have allergies anymore, and then I continued to not have allergies here in uh, in Los Angeles. So, study veterinarian. I know a lot of calicos and tricolors. They're never normal. <laughs> I guess the best you can hope for is entertainingly crazy. Wait, we know the dog here. And then Tracker suddenly appeared, so that means I know exactly which dog we're looking for. Like, you're fucking wearing the scarf, dude. You remind me of a certain statue I saw somewhere. Is that the canine tracker? Have you come to take me back to my master? You hear that, Amy? You must be on an errand from Princess Fuse if you bear that. But I shall not move from here, for the festival will begin soon. Chew. While you're here, maybe you should check up on Saki. I was thinking the same thing, Nemrin. I know chat will never believe me, but I really was. <laughs> this is it me canine warriors, and you're ignoring the princess's summons to wait for the festival? I'm back here tonight. We need to have a man-to-man -man talk. Man-to-man -man talk? Don't you mean dog to wolf? Anyway. Dog Saga is so cute. You bear the canine tracker so you know, must know what it decrees. Yeah, kicking your ass. Men settle their differences at night. Man to man, fist to fist. What do you mean dog to wolf? Paw to paw? You know, let this punk talk to you like that, Amy? I, look, I'm not picking the fight here, okay? These dipshits are trying to throw hands with a god, okay? 
Time for a lively fisting. I believe you mean pawing. Ooh. Whoa, hello. Oh, he a digger. Stop that. Oh, the counter. Oh, that's an attack. It didn't even occur to me. I was like, why is why is he digging holes? He's throwing the dirt on us. That's what he's doing. Finish him. Sorry, kid. Had to murder your dog. Throw pause. Amaterasu, a wolf here was always a girl, but then after years I got it. Okay, you've got some explaining to do, you doggy. Why are you ignoring the princess summons? Wait for the festival. I am not the real Hayabusa. The real Hayabusa died along with Mushi's father when they were attacked by monsters deep in the forest. I happened to pass by about that time, but I was too late. Right before Hayabusa died, he begged me to protect Mushi. He foretold the coming of an evil arrow from the sky. An arrow that would kill Mushi on the night of the full moon. That is how I came to live here in this village. Okay, that got way heavier. There you go. It doesn't have a sex. It's a god. <clears throat> I've been waiting for the full moon and the festival season. Last bosses, buddy. Thank you so much for the raid. How's it going tonight? What were you up to? Welcome, raiders. Good to see you. That's a raid. I guess Amaterasu is possessing a statue here. Yeah, I suppose so. <clears throat> Nobody knows I was not the real Hayabusa's. We are the same breed. The night the full moon draws near, I shall not move from here. My duty is to fulfill Hayabusa's dying wish. I must protect Muchi. She got really heavy with these dogs. Really heavy. Last bosses, have you played Okami before? Got Satomi Power Orb, Ami. Was all that he, what, what was all that he said Hayabusa foretold? Something or other about an arrow that would kill Mushi? It's not a very happy story for such a festive season. You have not? It's good. It's really good. If you like Zeldas, I think I think you would love this. But well, it's not related to that legend about Orochi and the arrow. Hey, Ami, looks like you found the three Satomi power orbs the canine warriors had. I know he promised to bring the dogs back, but... Well, this would bring Princess Fusei the power orbs. I wonder. Think they can handle the Crimson Helm over the Gale Shrine? Question. Constantly get shit for not playing Fallout or Mass Effect, any of them? Hmm... I don't know about Mass Effect. I, I almost feel like Mass Effect was was is more of a moment thing. Like Mass Effect was kind of big in the moment, but kind of less relevant now. Fallout, to me, the Fallouts are kind of more timeless. And there's so many of them that it's likely that you'll find one that, that like really clicks with you. Whether it be the older 2D style or the or the modern 3D style. <clears throat> Mass Effect was neat but not unmissable. I think the first two have a lot of mechanical clunkiness. <laughs> they all do. <laughs> I like I I enjoyed playing Mass Effect, but like I I don't miss those games and I don't think I don't think I really would have felt left, left out if I hadn't played them. A lot of people bounce off the first two Fallouts for a good reason. Yes. Yes. They are, especially going back to them now, they are slow. 
they are fucking glacial. I ha like I am a huge, huge like original Fallout fan, and I still find them hard to play sometimes. So, yeah, you gonna play Echo soon? Pray for you. How do you make these choices, dude? Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely true. Very susceptible to you built your character wrong. I love AC, but Ubisoft is yeah. Isn't that disappointing? Is, isn't that just absolutely heartbreaking? When you have a series that you really, really love, and then it turns out that the companies that, that push them out are just big piles of shit. <clears throat> Great Mother Okami Amaterasu. The vile creatures that threaten our world are growing in strength. It is of the utmost importance that we exercise great caution. As we rejuvenate each guardian sapling, I sprout a new fruit. These are known as guardian fruit. They contain wondrous treasures that I am honored to offer you. Each time you revive a sapling, you may return to Kamiki for more. Here, receive my offering. Your journey will be a long one, but perhaps this will aid you. May the fresh scent of flowers protect you always. Echo, that's one of the retro cl classics I regret never getting around to. Don't miss having to stick points into three different gun skills, or medicine and doctor. I just wish... Ah, oh God, I wish there had been a middle ground between the classic fallouts and the new ones. Like, <coughs> yeah, classic fallouts have a ton of clunk to them. They're, they're glacially paced games. You can absolutely screw up your character. Um, but if you, if you can get all, get past all that, some really amazing writing and story work there. Uh, and genuinely fun game. The newer Fallout streamlined, so it did, oh my god, Fallout Tactics. No. <laughs> the modern Fallout streamlined so many things, like the gameplay is, I mean, the gameplay is just fun. Like, they're, they're just fun games to play through, but like, I feel like in a lot of ways they watered things down too much. Like, I think it's really, really, really... I think it's kind of lame how easy it is to max out certain skills in, in the modern fallouts, like speech, and how it just lets you talk like everybody into whatever the fuck you want. Dungeons are on average too samey. I, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I, I would also indict Bethesda as a whole for that. Cause that's, that's a problem that's, that's afflicted the Elder Scrolls series as well. Inaccessible doesn't mean bad, but it does make it harder to recommend when when you have to add the caveat you're really going to have to work to enjoy this. Like you do. You have to you have to work to enjoy Fallout 1 and 2. Like you you need a minimum level of patience. Um if if you're not going to look up how to build characters like there's there's going to be some abortive attempts at playing it before you get one that really clicks. Yeah, I would never call the old Fallout games bad. I absolutely would not. They're some of my favorite games of all time. But e with every year that passes, they get they get harder to to recommend to people that have never played them. Any dungeon that isn't connected to a quest is almost certainly going to have at best minor environmental storytelling. I'm told Tactics Brotherhood is interesting, like taking naps makes you immortal. <laughs> I still love New Vegas and Skyrim and you can't make me change your mind. I would never try. I would never try. New Vegas is a fantastic game and Skyrim, I mean, it, Skyrim is becoming a literally timeless game with all of its re-releases and they wouldn't be re-releasing re it so much if people weren't buying it based on how popular it is. Older Fallouts and Morrowind, I assume we're talking about the modern ones that get flack for being modern Bethesda. I, I think the only, like, I think the real criticism there is how, like, how, how samey a lot of the design gets, how safe it gets. Like, my, my buddy, who's, who's a huge Elder Scrolls fan, said that that was kind of, like, the big disappointment going from from Morrowind to Oblivion to Skyrim is like the really crazy shit that made Morrowind so fun and so unique gets like gets scaled back with each iteration. Like, 
like he certainly he certainly enjoys Skyrim, but like the magic system, for example, he found really really boring in Skyrim, because in Morrowind you could just make the most insane shit possible. Disappointment was Oblivion. Skyrim made it more fun again. Skyrim has My Little Pony mods. <coughs> Excuse me. I ran out of water. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's a, 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 a bit of a problem with really safe design. And I mean, I, you know, I, I can't criticize too much because obviously stuff like, like Skyrim and Fallout 4 are insanely popular. They did incredibly well for having very safe designs, but you, you definitely lose some of the magic that was in the older, more experimental games when they had just systems that you could bust wide open, you know? Like, that was that was a huge part of the appeal there. Aren't any character builds in Skyrim? Every character just ends up gravitating your personal playstyle regardless of what it starts as. I don't think there's anything wrong with that necessarily. Like, older games definitely had a problem, I would say, with, like, like, different character builds being traps. Especially in ARPG. Like, we, we talked about this, uh, like, last week, maybe? But one thing, one thing that always disappointed me about the ARPG genre is it never seemed to fully evolve away from, like, trap builds and, like, just being able to completely screw up your character if you didn't, if you didn't place your, your skill points right. Um, and definitely older RPGs, like, yeah, Fallout, you could absolutely... In old Fallout, you could absolutely just, like make your character completely unworkable, depending on how you level them. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think... I, I think having a character that you can just kind of play the way you want has a certain appeal to it. But it's... it, it In my experience, it seems like the trade-off is you can never go completely crazy with it either. It, it does limit you in other ways. It makes you feel samey when any character can do everything, nothing means anything. I wouldn't go that far. I don't think I would go that far. Because it's still a matter of what you do with them. It, you know, it, it, I don't... I, I don't fully subscribe to the idea that, like, putting, like, putting points in a character's stat should fully define them, you know? That's, that's limiting in an entirely different way. Tried Fallout 1, apparently your starting quest is the finale, and they expect you to be more curious about that plume of smoke, smoke in the distance. <coughs> yeah, Fallout, Fallout 1 re relies on a lot of player curiosity and experimentation. I think games where you have to think about the systems and make a build carefully, I'd prefer turn-based stuff like Divinity Original Sin 2. For grand adventure exploring a big world, stuff like Skyrim, I don't really want to be bogged down in allocating talent points or whatever. Yeah, with it, I, I think with an open world design, you want like, op, like open character progression too. You, you'd be, you'd be hampering yourself if, if you really limited people in what they could do to just their build, instead of just kind of letting people do whatever they want as they stumble across things. One thing I really liked about Morrowind is, like, you could stumble across something like the Mage's Guild or, like, the Thieves' Guild. And, like, you might not even be specced at the time for it to be, like, a mage or a thief, but you could still kind of find a way to hack it together and make it work. And not only that, you kind of had to do that for the main quest, too. Like, they understood so clearly what they were making, they actually baked it into the main plotline that you kind of had to, like, spread out and do everything to accomplish what you were trying to do. Kind of a counterpoint would be Witcher 3. I think that did open world damn well, despite the various shortcomings that game still had. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, so what were we doing? Uh, revive saplings, get some fruit. Nothing like a present from a hot babe. Shut up, you soon. It looks like we got three, three ready here. 
see what we got. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. There we go. Oh my god. Uh, a bullhorn. Golden peach. Oh, that fills the astral pouch instantly. Nice. What I missed from Morrowind they jettisoned after was you actually need certain skill levels and appropriate skills to advance the ranks of the various guilds. That's true. That's true. At the same time, they, they didn't make it they didn't make it impossible to progress in everything either. That was the fun thing in Morrowind. Got a weird disease from a weirdo in a dungeon. Joined the Mages Guild because apparently I was a vampire now. None of the Elder Scrolls games have really done guilds as well as it feels like they should. Um, I don't think we need to come back here for anything. Doesn't seem like it. Skyrim's Thieves Guild is one of the only ones with interesting stuff to do after you beat the main guild plot and become Grandmaster or whatever. Most of them just get mid leader and then that's it. <laughs> Take a tree in full bloom. What exquisite beauty. Evil still lurks in these parts. Concentrate Lacard, you see, right behind you now. I forgot this guy was a trap. Fortunately, we totally evolved beyond these guys. Like, we have nothing to fear. Give me a full-on guild management sim once you're the boss. <laughs> Maybe they should get the Yakuza devs to do the, uh, the guild stuff. Chosen path of Buddha, but in you I sense another power. I see the path you've chosen is also a path of truth. Nice. Oddish, do you have any demon fangs? Uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is no. I have none. They met- like, I've met the guy that gives you demon- that- no. I've met the guy that you can trade demon fangs to. I haven't received, you know what? Nobody's told me how to get demon fangs. I bet it's in the travel guide. Maybe it was under battle tips. Yep, here it is, floral finisher. Discuss bonuses, nice reward for particularly well-fought battles, two ways to increase, defeat enemies more quickly, fight without taking damage yourself. Bonus increase number of coins. Floral finisher. Time warps and slows the moment a demon leaves this mortal coil. Use the brush at that instant to turn their cadaver into flora. The resentment will crystallize into a demon fang. The required technique differs depending on enemy type. The need to discover which celestial brush power to use. Tales amount of collectors enamored with the bewitching demon fangs. Collecting these fangs will serve. Okay. There we go. Does the Steam version have the loading screen thing? The loading screen thing. I could not tell you. Loads too fast to really do them. Yeah, I don't really, I, I don't really remember reading anything off of the loading screen, so I suppose not. Whee! Old Demon Fang business is why I bought one of those guidebooks for the game. That makes sense, yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not gonna fault it too hard. This game, overall, this game has done a really good job of explaining all of its shit. So, leaving that particular part out isn't so bad. Especially when, like, when somebody mentioned it, I was like, oh, I bet it's here, and it was there. How can you figure shit out like that without instructions? You can't, but there are instructions in the game, you just have to find them instead of being tutorialized, so. No worries, Nian. Glad you're back. Press a button, not sure which, in time with the pause appearing on one screen, you get fangs. And with the one that's blank, you just hammer a button. Interesting. You get bored and try things. Why would you not read the manual? I used to be so much better about reading the manual. 
When I was a kid, and I would get a new game, I would not start, I would not put that game in my system. Well, all right, fuck you too. I would not put that game in my system until I had read the manual cover to cover. This is a really cool area. I do, I do really like how open it is. Anyway, for now, I think we need to get back to... I think we're probably going to hoof it back to... Um... Oh, they already love me. I'm very popular with horses. We'll hoof it back to the village and then probably save and quit for the night. How did this whole... How did this whole thing work? Seems like you're enjoying Okami a bit more tonight than you were last time. Um, it might just be that I have more energy tonight. <laughs> it might just be that, that I'm a bit more well rested. Because that's, that's the thing, this game is not particularly fast paced, and it's very, very relaxing. As a kid, I always get yelled at for opening games on the drive home so I can re read the manual. Really? That's odd. So, okay, I think what I'm supposed to do is probably, like, no. I probably, like, stand here and then use this as an item, I would guess. Um, use mermaid coin. Fling. So this is a guy who did a cleaning sim for three hours last night. That was basically the same thing. I was, I was, I was really starting to fade. Uh, not Sasa. I guess Taka Pass. Never really figured out why they disliked the box opening. That's strange. Yeah, I, I definitely did that. I definitely did exactly that when I was a kid. Um, and then, all right, Kisa Village is south of here. It is up this hill, I think. Kinda wanna see what happens when you flip that house. I think you just sell it for money. I, I'm, I'm not really expecting anything monumental to happen. When I, when I do it, I, I ho hopefully I will find the time to play more House Flipper in my own time. And when I do flip it, I'll let you know. I like the big chunky ones, like the original Baldur's Gate. Y'all keep talking about manuals. I'm gonna go over to my, uh, I'm gonna go over to my bookshelf again and get them all out. Wave match you. You get a third cyborg arm. Oh, if only. If only. All right, gang. I think that is going to do it for our doggo adventures tonight. Rarf. So next time, I guess we'll be able to solve uh, solve the mystery of this place. Take on Crimson Helm, and I think we'll get the wind power. You read game manuals? Everybody. One's the cool stuff like Metal Gear Solid 3's tutorial. All right, all right. Y'all, y'all have talked about this enough. I'm gonna go get my manuals. Let me, let me get out of this. Now that we have saved. That was the DRM. Oh yeah, putting putting something in the manual that you had to that you had to enter in the game. Well, I had I had so my first game system was actually Commodore sixty four, and that was absolutely how they did copy protection. I remember uh, we had a game called Airborne Ranger. Um, it was a really cool game, really really cool game on the Commodore sixty four. Every time you loaded up the game, at the very start, uh, there would be a quiz on. Um, which, 
Like they would show you six medals and they would quiz you like which one is the distinguished medal of da 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 da. And they had all that in the in the instruction manual. So if 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 you were naughty and copied that floppy, you probably wouldn't have a copy of the instruction manual where it told you which metal was which. Unless you were an army kid, I don't think you'd know either. So all right, hang on a second. have here a small selection of uh, some of the best manuals I have. <coughs> the fun to discover things that is Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo is my favorite system of all time. And I actually have <coughs> a fancy one right here. This is a Super NT that we'll be using for things. All right. You know what? Get you the close up. Hello, all. Uh, so let's see. What do we got here? Well, first of all, did y'all ever play Alpha Centauri? Alpha Centauri had one thick ass manual. They went through everything in that. Everything. And they even uh, fleshed it out with some plot and fluff. This seems like a goddamn novel. But still very practical. They put all the hotkeys on the back for you. So that's one. Um, Arcanum. We've never played this. <coughs> very, very. <laughs> I can't talk without coughing anymore. It's gotten too dry in here. I need to get like a humidifier in here or something. Um, very cool, very cool PC RPG. Very beautiful manual too. I I like this one a lot, quite a bit. <laughs> Didn't think you were allowed to show pornographic materials on Twitch. The stream is going to get banned. We're just getting started. Are you kidding? Because uh, I have here the two spiral bound manuals for Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. Written, written like an actual survival guide from Vault Tech, which is really cool. Uh, all kinds of neat details in this. Let's see. Breakdowns of all the items, how AP works. They, uh, they even put some cute stuff in the back here. There's several appendixes. <coughs> and one of them is a recipe page, which I always thought was really cute. We had one of the later copies of Carmen Sandiego that came with the wrong edition of the book. They had, uh, they had to give a cheat sheet for the copy protection. That's funny. So this one's written like a, like a Vault Tech survival guide, right? This one, it's Vault Tech lab journal, right? This one is really cool because this one is written like the notes from the character from Fallout 1, since you're their ancestor. So this one is like really, really cool because even, even the instruction manual ties into the plot. I always thought that was a really, really cool detail. And then the last one I grabbed, I'm not even sure I've flipped all the way through this one. Oh no, I have, because I, yeah, I, I had to refer to it from magic and stuff. Icewind Dale manual, also spiral bound, also thick as hell. Um, lots of really handy little maps and stuff in here. Full breakdown of different spells and stuff in here. And, and the boxed version of this one actually came with a cloth map of where the game takes place. 
I mean, I'm not even I'm not even the biggest fan of like Baldur's Gate Icewind Dale, but like this shit's cool. This shit is really, really cool. This is just a very this is just a tiny, tiny selection of the manuals I have. I have kept every single piece of literature that has ever came with any of my games ever. All my here. Here. Um Here you go. Fat, fat stack of Super Nintendo manuals right here. Castlevania 4, Gradius 3, Shadowrun, UN Squadron, Super Mario RPG, Soldiers of Fortune, Super Star Wars. I bought this one used and they include the manual. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, all right. You notice the Game Boy, the Super Game Boy. Well, this one is actually loaded with a, uh, an EverDrive cartridge that has every Game Boy game ever made on it. So I actually have full access to the entire Game Boy library through this. <clears throat> and yes, this, the, yeah, this is the, this is, this is the Lego Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, there's supposed to be a control deck, but I accidentally threw it away when I moved, which was absolutely heartbreaking for me. Uh, I, <coughs> I may get around to replacing that one day, but probably not. Have the Chrono Trigger manual, but with no cover. UN Squadron? Oh, I guess, I guess we streamed UN Squadron uh, before, maybe before you started watching. We did that one way back. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really cool side-scrolling shooter on the Super Nintendo. Uh, in other regions, it was called uh, Area 88, wasn't it? I think. Call the UN squad and they can recover your lost tech. <clears throat> so yeah. Just a selection of some of the cool stuff I have laying around here. There, are, there will be more, certainly, but I think for now I probably need to get off to bed because my kids are starting school tomorrow and I need to actually be up and conscious to get them going. So, um, Schedule-wise, wow, it's RA Wednesday, huh? It's just... Just three more nights of streaming this week. Goodness. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm actually going to be starting Willow on the NES. Um, we played a little bit of that on our last, not last Power Hours? Or the one before? One before, maybe. Uh, and I want to give it a full go. So tomorrow night, if you're curious about another Zelda-ish style game on the NES, probably want to be here for that. On Friday, we're doing Wheel of the Week. Folks have uh, submitted some entertaining looking games from the Steam week-long deals. We will spin the wheel, pick three of them, and see which one is the most entertaining out of those. And then on Saturday, Saturday I'm not 100% sure, we're either going to finish Willow if we need to, or uh, do another Power Hours. We'll crack open the old Nintendo Power magazines and look for more NES and Game Boy games to play. So. Yes, uh, if you want to submit a game to the wheel for Friday, the rules are in our Discord. In the link to the Discord, down there. Not on my dick, in the links below this video, okay? So. Uh, it's technically Thursday now. It's 1.10 in the morning thir on Thursday. I'm just saying, I don't want anybody who just rocks up in here and sees me going like this to get the wrong idea, okay? I'm just clarifying. So, yeah. All right. And with, with all that said, I'm going to send you all to go raid somebody. 5, 10 a.m. Yeah, I'm on, I'm, on the, I'm on the west coast of the United States. Uh, sunny, lovely Los Angeles. All right. Let's send you all. Who's doing what there? Oh, hey. Funny, we were just talking about uh, PC RPGs, and Split Black Ribbon is playing Pillars of Eternity. Let's go hang out with him for a bit, shall we? I like Pillars of Eternity quite a bit. I haven't played the second one. I heard the second one's better, but I like the first one a lot. Um... Can't believe you guys didn't manage to make the September game a tie for a runoff vote. Can, can, can we just savor it? Can we just enjoy the fact that we have 
a, a clear choice of game and play it and be happy for once. I mean, I know, I know you all tie up the future ones and work just that much harder fucking up the democracy that I try so hard to offer you. But yeah. Anyway, thank you all for coming out tonight. Hopefully I will see you tomorrow night for more fun, streamy, classic-y, gamey stuff. But until then, as always, y'all take care. Bye, everybody.